Hello, everybody. Hello, and hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here. How is everybody oh, doing? There we are. Yep. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Oh, it's Saturday night, and we are live back on tonight. Live. As Saturday live. Night. It's Saturday night. Then we'll get hit with a copyright up, infringement. You <laughs> guys, and all the other things that everybody says. Uh, oh. <laughs> we're all here on Saturday, the same as we are every day from Monday to Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern, except for Sundays. Sundays are days for family. That's right. Uh, and we are so happy to see you guys joining us tonight uh, uh, for the show uh, and our amazing guests today. And uh, the best nights, the Saturday nights are well spent with family and friends, and we consider you guys here our family and friends. And Without a lot. doubt. And I missed you guys, by the way, with all the stuff going on and that. You have no idea this week has been so weird. So it's really nice to have you back in my life. Oh, and we have Night Shame is here. Welcome. Good to see you. I love his uh, live streams. I like that. Uh, he has that voice. It's so epic. I love it. Uh, Panic D videos. So good to have you guys. Always a pleasure. Always great content. Terrell, the one and only, the original. Terrell, the original. Mm -hmm. Hi. Panic D videos, by the way, had an amazing stream tonight. It was very engaging and entertaining. They had a guest on. You were uh, hooked on it. Oh, my God. I was, I was hooked on it. Uh, yeah. yeah, I watched it all. Um, mm. Uh, yeah, it was very interesting. If you're interested in all things paranormal, if you think that you are a sensitive person in paranormal way, uh, go back and check their uh, live stream with our special guest uh, this, today. That was quite awesome. They were so, they're such good people too. I mean, I love their style. Yeah. I, like the way, I like the way they compliment each other, and I like the way they do it from a scientific perspective. And it's not like. Uh, Ooh, scary and just pushing it for shock value. No, it's not a know? Ghostbusters thing. It's yeah. it's uh, they do the investigative stuff and uh, uh, they talk about things uh, from the science point of exactly. view because they are a working and educational system. Yep, that's right. Uh, they're scientists as well, so it's it's quite interesting. So go check it out. It was very engaging. It was. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, the Good Cell Life is in. Hello, hello. Uh -huh. The Good Cell Life is our special guest tonight. Welcome. So give a special round of applause to Good Cell Life. And if you haven't checked them out, you have a moment to do that. And Handy Videos, by the way, uh, used my <laughs> uh, sentence today and uh, referred to us as well. Right. If you're lazy <laughs> to share this video by pushing that share button, uh go to our twitter and share our special poster for our special guest today um make it known that our live stream is live and if you're extra lazy just don't do that and it's fine too we have uh, somebody special here the good cell life why would they be special tonight not that they're not special every night but why would they be extra special tonight i wonder maybe because they're going to be on that's what i just said I just like saying it this way better. I was trying to, too. <laughs> I think That's sometimes Andrew tries to pretend that I'm not here, so he just repeats things, although I already told them, but that's okay. <laughs> we, also, we also have Nathaniel is partial to percussion. Good to see you. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. How's everybody doing tonight? Hopefully, your guys are yep. having a good Saturday night. We have long weekend here in Canada. Uh, it's Victoria Day um, on Monday. Um, some other names used in other provinces. And we have a long weekend, and that also means the kids were off on Friday and as Monday. well. Uh, and Monday. So we're having a four day weekend. Uh, yeah, we were doing oh. a painting as. Uh, Thanks, Philip. It's not over yet. Yeah, <laughs> but we thank are you. In doing uh some other parts of our uh apartment yeah. as well so uh, changing up a little bit uh, here and there and thank you to xenia because i she helps when i get frustrated and especially and stuff like that when i get tired of it so i do appreciate it so 
Yeah, I I can't paint as much as I used to. I love painting actually, but I hate uh, it. unfortunately, my my uh, physical well being is not letting me do it as much as I would love to. Mm -hmm. But uh, it looks great, and uh, we're well on our way. Did a little bit of uh, rearranging of the furniture yep. today as well. So, uh, so yeah, that's what's, what's what. Ba 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 ba. I'm talking. <laughs> That's what we are doing on the long weekend. What there are you go. guys doing on your weekend? Rocky and the Derek, Derek Show. Show. Hello. Welcome. Nice to see you. And I didn't. I guess I make sure I know announce Nathan properly. So Nathan likes drum drums. It's always good to have you here. Pleasure to see you. Uh, Panic the videos, uh, yeah, it has some now. They had uh, very interesting. They actually had storm coming through the live, like you could hear thunder. Oh, really? Yeah, they were talking, and uh, their the guests were talking about how it's it's bad to uh, buy mirrors at the garage sale because they contain so much energy. And the moment she said mirrors was do do do, and it was so loud, like oh, it was yeah. so it was louder than their voices it went through the live stream wow and it was going through like their live stream in the background every so often as the storm was it's coming crazy. on was <laughs> was was very impressive I, I gotta get the steam test while it's on the new paint to see if it's more visible now um that's hot that's really this thermos is amazing thank you hon for the great thermos welcome. i always love it <laughs> It does such a good job. I got to take the cap off just to be able to drink it. <laughs> it makes it hotter than what it started as. Who of you guys uh, woke up today, or um, if you didn't have to, just uh, went and watched the royal wedding this morning? Honestly, I was a bit, I wanted to, but it was way too early. It was uh, four and six o'clock uh, yeah. Eastern. Way too early for me to wake up, but I watched it afterwards. It was really amazing, beautiful, romantic. Uh, not too pompous. Uh, was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you didn't know, Meghan Markle, the new Duchess of Sussex, mm -hmm. her new title, uh, she's Canadian. Yes, that's uh, right. So uh, a little tidbit of information. Uh, go and check it out. It, it really was really beautiful. It's It was kind of like... Um, you know, like uh, when uh, Prince William was uh, getting married, it was very royal, very uh, up to traditions. This was more like a, a more luxe part of uh, weddings that people dream about. You know, a princess wedding, but nothing too over the top. Very, very. I thought it was uh, pretty over comfy. the top. I just seen about two minutes, and that was. Well, five, you know, many. the tradition of of, <laughs> yeah. of uh, carriage going through and stuff. Uh, that's part of uh, the royals, but the actual mm. uh, decorations and things like that weren't over the top at all. I actually enjoyed it a lot. Um, well, hello, on. Christy K nine. Welcome. Good to have you here. And how are you doing today? So good to have you. And we have an awesome guest coming on in a few minutes. One very familiar to a lot of people here. Uh, the Good Cell Life. <clears throat> the family, other than they're documenting their um, adventures, yep. <laughs> their life, and trying to um, lighten up everybody's day yep. uh, at the same time as they're doing it. I think they're awesome. Their channel is really nice and heartwarming. And we're very happy to have them on and share that with you. Yep. Um, yesterday, who do we have yesterday? We had uh, the, natural the natural journey. journey. I always mix it with health, happy. Tra I always mix those two for some reason. Yeah, I know. When I say the, them, I know the them the apart words. when I say yeah. the word. But um, yeah. They they were really great, and uh, they were all the way from New Zealand yeah. on our live stream yesterday. My old joke about Back to the Future, I will go to tell you again. <laughs> uh, we were Back to the Future. They were in their Saturday. We were on our Friday. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was noon their time, and it was 8 o'clock at our time in the evening, and we had really great conversation mm -hmm. about... Uh, changing the lifestyle, uh, they changed from all meat eaters to vegans, um, and also uh, going, uh, moving to New Zealand from UK. They originally are from south of UK. Uh, now they live in, uh, for a little bit more than a year, they live now in New Zealand. Um, 
in the area that was hit um, by the big earthquake in 2008, I think. Um, so they are part of rebuilding uh, the, the town and the area. Uh, that's what they're doing there. Uh, and they were talking about that, how it is to live in a different country, how it is to be an expat with three kids, with three small kids. Um, it was very interesting. And uh, again, I kept telling it to them, but they truly um, shine through their, their warmth and their uh, mindfulness mm -hmm. uh, through their interviews, through their screen. You could, um, you know, you could feel that peace and inner harmony that I think they both and all their family portray uh, through the interviews that we had yesterday. So if you want to get a piece of that, uh, go and check in our mm -hmm. live stream video yesterday, from mm -hmm. yesterday. Yep. Fasia Six, hello. Welcome. Good to see you. How are you guys all doing today? And also, I just said hi. Musky Hans is here. Uh, Wind City Steve O. Good to have you all here. I love Wind City Steve O. He has a great yeah. sense of humor. Always uh, comes in with uh, yeah. uh, with a, a really mm -hmm. good uh, joke. Witty. And witty. Yes, yeah, that's really right, witty. the word I was looking for. A uh, really joke. So uh, thank you for coming in. And uh, yeah, you know why, Wind City? Because we are against almost white walls today. So we're gonna. Yeah. I think we're gonna adjust our lighting afterwards. Um, yeah. Uh, for this, because we uh, kind of look uh, gray and uh, orange. <laughs> it uh, <laughs> looks like a bit like a like a like a, like a, like a Excuse like me. amateur porn set. Like, yeah. I'm thinking like that. You know, when they take a hose and just use it for the shoot. I think my skin just blends in with the background, <laughs> and and yours just pops out of it. So we are right on. <clears throat> but um, that's a part of renovations. <laughs> Uh, oh yesterday we had our live stream from our kitchen. So also, yeah. if you want to know what color is our kitchen, yeah. you <laughs> gotta go and check out our our live stream from yesterday. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, so now uh, let me retweet our stream. And if you haven't done that, hit that like uh, and share button or retweet ours. Yep, it's we really appreciate it, guys. It does a it is a huge service. We do thank you millions if you can share it. The more the merrier, of course. That's right. Interesting uh, analogy. <laughs> yeah. There we go. You missed the burn orange? Yeah, yeah. us too. Yeah. Us too. Uh, we were considering uh, painting it green, and then we could do like a green screen on the back. <laughs> you, you never know. <laughs> you never know. Uh, with you, yeah, yeah, but you never know with us. Uh, it yeah. changes in a span of a moment. That's so. right. <laughs> this is true. Do, 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 do. Oh, I gotta open Facebook. That's I think right. the background is uh, probably soon gonna be covered again with our posters. Yeah. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. um, the posters that we have from the on Doodles by Doug and Panic D videos and uh, Hosier and, and a few other ones uh, that we received, um, that we're probably going to put them in the background. Wasn't that cool? Like, I still, uh, I, that mug is so amazing. Like, I, I just keep looking at it. Every time I see it, I'm blown away. Mm -hmm. Same as Doodles by Doug's uh, character and stuff like that cool <laughs> it's nice to have people that appreciate you like that that means more than any kind of money you could ever get uh, so now type with me <clears throat> and we are live <laughs> She's come <laughs> and join the fun is it fun you never know Windy City uh, it's like a delay colors why not tell it's your friends Maybe a graffiti wall. Join you. Oh, I would love that. To mm. join you too. <laughs> Hashtag live with Pusha and Good Cell Live. And tweet it out. There you go. That's right. Panic D videos. Tweeting it out does bring in new people. That's 100% right. And it's great too because it's a byproduct. Some people who haven't met you yet, they haven't, like if you bring in some people and other people haven't met them yet, it gives them a chance to mingle more and vice versa. So everybody wins. Yeah, if you want to tag some other people in it. But again, that's not. No, no, we're not going to badger you guys. If you're too lazy, guys. it's fine yeah. too. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just doing it uh, right now as we usually do. So <laughs> gonna be reach be lazy and retweet. Perfect. Nothing Perfect. With lazy. <laughs> it's actually in a one in in some point it's better for Twitter. For Twitter, Twitter it's better so. because the more retweets and likes one tweet has, the more higher it is in a in a mm -hmm. homepage uh, for others to view. For video, it's better to be retweeted from the video, but if you want to be seen, it's, it's better to retweet the original tweet. That's just how it rolls. There you go. Posted that. Yeah. Thank you, Panic D, by the way. <laughs> how are you doing, Terrell? Terrell's, I'm sure, in and out. Alien64, did you say hello? 67 uh, is oh. in. Hi there. You have to go to the yep. wedding. Yes. That's right. That's right. Our our royal <laughs> YouTube family is getting married. <laughs> Isn't that's that cool? True. Yes, that's so cool. And yeah. and I remember uh, the time that we were talking about the, their wedding uh, on our stream when they were guests. Uh, we were joking about it being live. You know, <coughs> uh, one of the questions was, I yeah. think it came from the chat. Uh, are you guys gonna? make it live and they're like no 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 yeah. that's no that's and so cool you see you'll never know you never know how it works out and uh, this is amazing they were uh thinking of postponing it first uh, yep. and then they actually decided to sped it up and live stream it as well i'm so, so happy for them i'm so happy for them uh our thoughts are with them yep. uh, as they are uh doing their vows Vows. Wow. What is going vows? on with you lately? Vows. Vows. I need a voice. Uh, it's not just coach. vows. There's lots Anybody of. Anybody of you out there who has a voice, voice, voice coach? My <laughs> my language is getting really weird. Uh, voice coach. So vows, yeah. Vows, yeah. Like a dog. Bow wow. No, a dog is bow wow. <laughs> <laughs> but close enough. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Why not? <laughs> so, yeah, I seen Panic Dear just retweeted our retweet of mm. our tweet. Yeah. <laughs> Blame yeah. Andrew. No, why not? Yeah, that like works. if anything, like blame everything to Andrew. <laughs> Andrew's got big shoulders. He'll handle it. He'll take it. It's all good. <laughs> So what else is going on with you guys? We'll have to bring on our guests in a minute. I'm going to get a uh, link over in that. So chat amongst yourselves. I'm going to send it in. Uh, oh, yeah, Facebook. For them. That's right. That is true. Hey, uh, Facebook, you can put them on Twitter, too. We have them on Twitter? Well, I, I'll message them, and then you'll see it. OK. Because I found them on Twitter today, although oh. they're not tagged. <laughs> oh no. Oh guys, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Let's see okay, here. Okay, I'm gonna say hi and then you're gonna see it. Okay. There you go. Perfect. We get them on Twitter. I'm out of town with oh, I'm out of town with my girlfriend. Her mother passed away. I'm just oh, kinda stay. We're so sorry to Yeah, hear I'm that. I'm sorry to hear that. So sorry to hear that about your old girlfriend. And mm. so it's it's great that you're there with her though. I'm yeah. sure she needs support. Exactly. Our condolences to you and your girlfriend or family. Swimming in the pool with the little guy. Wow. That's cool. Bottle caps. Hi. Oh, bottle caps. Thank you so much. I don't yeah. know if you wanted to share it now or not. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for um sending amazing, yummy pictures. Of I think it was three different treats, three different uh, cakes. Uh, my question was, were you the one that made them all, and did you make them all in one evening? They looked so delicious. It's on uh, his birthday today. Yeah. Oh, you do? Okay. Sorry, I just seen that there. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, nobody could hear that because. Oh, <laughs> Anyways, you know now, so <laughs> it's not like a, it's one name. Just didn't want to make it like. Saying it right into the mic. It's <laughs> well, it's my cousin's birthday today. Her name is Zana. So hello, uh -huh. Zana, if you're looking at it. <laughs> yep. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday all the way to Latvia. How do you say it in Latvian? Daudz Lime Simpsons Diana. There you go. There you go. <laughs> oh. 
you love your kitchen but those were amazing i mean the work on uh you the burnt um effect uh, how is it called now i'm so bad at language today um meringue there you go meringue so first was uh, uh, uh lattice pie uh, i would assume there's uh, homemade strawberries in it strawberry or cherry or cherry well the other night bottle caps was talking about homemade strawberry jam so that's yeah. why i kind of assumed but maybe cherry and then uh chocolate cake just looks amazing like i want a piece of that and uh this meringue probably looks like a lemon meringue pie yeah is so beautifully done yeah i'm kind of hungry right now <laughs> i shouldn't like, look at this se send me a piece. oh i gotta close it because there's personal messages and everything there i should have saved those pictures looks very nice though <laughs> the pies look amazing i should have saved the pictures of the desktop and did it that way yeah um You've only seen the grandmother like twice in your life, so yeah, I know it's understandable, but yeah. let's say it's for your girlfriend you're there, not for the yeah. grandpa or grandmother. I know it's sometimes it, it is weird, especially when we're not too, uh, close to the people, uh, the, their funerals, um, you know, but it's good for you to, to be for your girlfriend there, just for her to know that you're there. So, Alex, I hope I pronounce this properly. Alex Fox, Foxes, Alex Fo Fox. I hope we're pronouncing it. Please correct us if we're not. Hello, welcome, welcome back, by the way. Good. Oh, Alex's return. Yep. This week? Yep. That's why. Okay, because yeah, I've been in and out. So uh, I apologize. Uh, I've been in and out a lot this week. So. And so is Night Shame? What? Night Shame. Oh, Night Shame is what? Well. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, good God. Then we got to get some... Uh, here, let's get some moderator stuff happening. There you go, Night Shame. You're a moderator. And Alex, pleasure to meet you. And moderator as well. Blah, blah, blah. We're all equal. That's why we do it here, because everybody's respectful to each other. So there you go. <laughs> well, if it's a troll, if any of the people I, uh, you know, that we give our <laughs> blue wrenches to become trolls, uh, there's an yeah, easy way of exactly. dealing with it. So. For mm -hmm. now, it hasn't been any problem. That's right. Blue wrench. Hashtag blue wrench. Ding, ding, ding. Panic video says that's right. Raspberry liqueur in an icing. Ooh. Now, where is that 24-7 delivery of cupcakes again? And we're going to get our guest on here before. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, whoa, oh, I want a piece of it. I haven't baked anything for such a long time now. I actually miss it. I, I, I love baking. And uh, we decided to do a original recipe of brownies on Panic D uh, live live stream today. Okay. Because there was an original recipe from nineteen no from eighteen ninety two World uh, Trade Fair. Uh, that was the first time when brownies were actually well invented or made. Oh. And there cool. is original recipe, um, and uh, we're all going to make it and try it. You know what the original recipe included on the brownies? What? Apricot glaze. Jeez. Yeah, I know. Lovely. Ty, thank God. How are you? Hello, hello. <laughs> oh, and good sell. You got the link. I just sent it to you on Twitter. How are you doing today? Good to see you. Do you guys find the acoustics different? Are you hearing us louder now compared to before? Any difference? Just as a side note. Uh, uh, Ty speaks, by the way, is very interesting channel as well. Uh, just uh, joined us recently, but if you like to talk about uh, um, emotional, like uh, anxiety and depression yeah. and uh, mental issues, uh, uh, there's lots of inspirational uh, stuff uh, for you there. Uh, definitely check uh, Ty speaks. Um, very good channel. Okay, I thought it was Ty. What's well, the name? Ty. <laughs> Thought, what could be wrong? Good, you're having technical difficulties. No rush, we're not gonna run off on you. <laughs> There's something I can help you with. Just message me on Twitter. Yeah, we had some difficulties yesterday with uh, on natural journey as well, a little bit, but uh, we got through them. Uh, they got through them, mm -hmm. uh, so it was all fine. We can just chat uh, in the meantime. If you guys have anything new coming up, uh, don't be afraid. 
and uh, chime in. Um, tell us what your plans are, what you're doing. And also, uh, some of you already have taken the advice <laughs> of tweeting things out to us. Uh, oh. So if those of you who haven't heard, if you want us to join a live stream, like uh, or you know, like let us know that you have a new video or things like that. The tweet at us, so because the the YouTube bell is not working properly. Thank you so much, Philip. I appreciate that. I was wondering because you know we had all the pictures are down right now and that, so I was curious about the acoustics. Panic D says the same, but you're on. We're going through your TV. Cool. So there we go. One same, one different. That works. Get a straw poll going. The picture looks a little bright as well. Yeah, yeah the paint bring it out. Yeah. Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome. How are you guys doing? Good in yourself. Good everybody here on the couch. Make sure. Fit everybody. <laughs> I love it. How, How are, are you? you guys tonight? Good in yourselves. We are, are doing good. Thank you so much for having us on. Oh, it's our pleasure. The pleasure's all ours. It's so nice to uh, you guys to give some of your time with us. So thank oh, you. Yeah, I, I love your guys' uh, live streams. So thank you. <laughs> Our dog just went under the tripod. I, like, oh no! Don't knock it over. That, that's all about being live, my friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I don't even know where to start because, I mean, we've seen a lot of you guys' videos. We've talked a lot, you know, through chat and stuff like that. People, I mean, any of you have not checked them out yet, right? Away, you'll definitely have to go check them out. We'll put links uh, during the, the, the interview. I'm dropping it in right now. Oh. It's really, I mean, it's the greatest channel on YouTube. I don't know why. why it's great, right, 100%. <laughs> so we're celebrating that. That's why we're here tonight, to celebrate the number one channel on YouTube. So. Yeah. No, uh, I think no, we pretty just, much met you already, but I guess we'll start just by getting you guys to each take a turn to introduce yourselves. We'll start there, I guess. All right. Well, I'm I'm John. I'm the dad. Go ahead. I'm Abby. I'm I, Kelly. Uh, I'm the mom. I'm Noah, the son. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're a little nervous. It's different. We've never been interviewed before, so it's kind of it's kind of nerve wracking. I, I know the feeling. <laughs> we feel the same way, but there's absolutely nothing to worry about. This is as calm. You're on a couch, we're on a couch, and we're just talking. So just uh, you guys are great at what you do, so don't even sweat it. <laughs> Careful, so, we might start talking too much, and then you'll never Oh, know. that's perfect. Floor is yours. You guys are the guest of honor. Exactly. So, you know, we're just here to listen. <laughs> So I guess we'll start off. Uh, maybe you guys want to tell a little bit about the channel. I'm sure, like I say, most people know already some, but the floor is you guys. Is just talk a bit about what you do, what uh, your channel's about. Okay. Well, uh, we started uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, we had we had watched YouTube. Um, we all had our our favorite channels that we watched, and my son had been uh, bugging me about starting a, a vlogging channel, um, and I didn't want to do it. I, you know, it's, especially now that I know how much work it, work it is, I, I can understand why I didn't want to do it, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, he, he shot some videos and stuff. We never really kind of got it going. He had his own channel. Uh, he does, uh, Legos and Minecraft videos and stuff. And, um, but so finally I was like, all right, well, I always watched a, a vlogger and I thought, well, he makes it look so easy. So it's gotta be easy. Um, and so we, we started the channel and, um, just kind of, I, I look back at our first video and I didn't even do like an intro or anything. Um, I just started uh, shooting a vlog um, and, and I just, we kind of just, I, or at least me, I just thought everybody had just flocked to our channel, um, <laughs> you know, and uh, it, obviously it, it didn't happen that way um, that we started, you know, so we went a uh, year and uh, we had about 42 subscribers. Um, and so, uh, you know, and then, uh, but yeah, and so it was just, we wanted to get out there. You know, our kids are starting to, to get a little bit older. Uh, you know, I'll be a freshman this year. Abby's going to be in seventh grade. Um, you know, and it was like, you know, years from now, we can look back at these videos and see, uh, you know, what it was like and, and fun stuff that we did. Uh, so that was kind of one of the reasons why we started it. And, you know, we like to make people laugh. So we thought maybe we can, we can do some of that too. And don't forget Pictionary too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, live streams, we, we just started, you know, that was kind of um, when 
uh, YouTube threw down all those new rules. We started following other people and uh, saw that, I mean, just everybody loves doing the live streams. Yeah. Um, you know, and they're, they're a little tougher to do because you can't edit. You can't, you can't control what's being put out there as much oh, as yeah. being said. Um, but I was like, well, we'll give it a shot. And like I said, the, uh, the Pictionary and some of those game things, is it was a blast doing those. So. I knew Bottle Caps was going to light up the moment I said Pictionary, and he right away wrote "Yay, Pictionary." <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. Bottle Caps loves. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do that again. It seems like everybody really liked that. Um, so and you guys do a really good job. So of it. Yeah, it was. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And we true. found out that the way people see their chats not the same way we see our chat. That became a hot debate. So. <laughs> well, that's okay though. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. And it's good to keep inventing stuff and finding ways like because live chats are hard. They're they really are, like you say. But to me, to do a vlog would feel ten times harder. Cause without that direct interaction, but then again, you guys work as a family is a little more dynamic going on. But I watch some of these guys that hold a camera in front of their face and I'm I, I bewildered. Bewildered of how you can do that. And come up with some content. Like I'm jealous. I'm not knocking it. Totally unbelievable. It is. Jealous. It's very difficult to come up with the content. Um, yeah. That's. I, I look at the ones that are daily vloggers, and I don't know how they do it. I'm like, you know, we we struggle to put out two videos a week. Yeah. Um, you know, with our schedules and, and everything else. So these ones that do it every day, that that's crazy to me. Especially the big guys. I mean, they're but at least they got a, some editors most times and stuff like that. You know, they'll do their rough cut, then send it to a guy they got doing the editing so it can take some of the sweat off of them. But, yeah, it's a huge task. Yeah, I know I'm still supposed to send you guys videos, and you're supposed to edit for me. <laughs> yes, That's right. exactly. That's right. <laughs> Andrew loves editing. I think, I think I'm going to start forgetting how to edit soon. We got so into the live streams, and then real life, I feel so weird in Premiere now when I go to do anything, it's like even doing the photo series. So that's something I'm my kind of my new goal now is to get back into that because I don't I that was the whole reason why I joined in the first place on YouTube was for that. Yeah, I, you're I mean your guys is I mean amazing photography that you guys do. Oh. Thank you, thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> she got into photography, and I just I I used to edit. I studied multimedia integration back in two thousand. And I worked for a music company, did all the stuff. Then I got away from it. And then when she started doing photography and was really starting to get into it, mm -hmm. it was more on a necessity because Xenia doesn't drive. I go with her these places. So yeah. why not offer video? <laughs> I, I don't like video. I don't like video uh, doing video work. I, I'll do it, but I'm not passionate about it. I would rather be just doing the editing and people bringing in this, like her bringing in the footage. I would mm -hmm. be 10 times happier. But when in Rome, so until we can well, hire maybe, you. Maybe, maybe. Oh. Or you can just send your videos. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm always that is the nice thing about live streams is you don't have to edit. You just put yeah. it out there. It is. It is. I mean, it, it's it's a weird feeling. We never wanted to do one. That was the last thing. We never wanted to be in front of a camera. We can't stress that enough. It was never in the cards, but. Kind of worked out that way, I guess. So, but it's great with people with with great channels like you guys and getting to talk and that. This I I wouldn't want to do it every day, just sitting on the couch yapping about the weather and stuff. I wouldn't be into it. So, yeah, Kelly kind of likes to be behind the camera, but we force her to Most come in front of the camera. Sometimes. sometimes I come out from the shadows. <laughs> There's always one person. <laughs> yeah, we let her out of the basement every once in a while. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> you guys are too funny. What do you like about the live stream? Yeah, when you do them. Um, uh, well, getting getting to interact with people right away is is the thing. Is you know that the chat um, is always the 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 great part. I think um, you know because you are you're interacting with those people right then and there, not you know posting a video and then they comment and then then you're you know trying to interact that way. But yeah, the live chat is just great. And it's just instant. I mean, and you talk, you think about where everybody is from. And like Donna said before, you get to that map up there. We've been keeping track of where everybody's from, you know, and trying to figure that out. It's really awesome to think about you're chatting with somebody in, well, where you guys are in Canada and you're talking to somebody in, I don't know, we have one up there on Jamaica. Um, it's yeah. kind of crazy to think about that. So that's exciting. Have you counted how many countries do you have there? <laughs> no, uh, I think we put about about forty pins. Um, oh wow! Of them are in the, the U.S. Yeah, mostly but, in the U.S. here, yeah, but 
So 40 different locations. That's that's amazing, though. Yeah. It's, yeah. And it is mind blowing, isn't it? Like when we yesterday had uh, the natural journey from New Zealand on, you know, it, it is kind of crazy to think that you get to know more about people that are New Zealand right now, you know, or are or, or you it's 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 crazy how much YouTube brings people actually together, you know, and getting to know people's lifestyles and culture and in different sides of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is, it is amazing, um, just that, that all around the world, and we're it, kind of like we're all sitting in the same room. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's amazing technological feat that we take for granted, because things change so fast now, we don't even realize we have a new marvel right in front of us. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is, yeah, we're hooked up to our phone right now, and so that our, you know, we can do all this uh, around the world um, from our from our phones, and, you know, we shoot, we shoot most of our videos on our phone because um, we're too cheap to buy the expensive cam vlogging cameras. No. Um, Phone you know, is good so. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the job. You know, so, yeah, it's, it's crazy. The, actually, the only thing you usually don't use them for anymore is, is a phone. <laughs> it's like yeah. the yeah. rarest part of it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we watch movies, everything else on them, and then it's, we're like, wait, you're you're interrupting my movie with a phone Yes, call. that's right. Yes. For, I forgot it, to silence that. It should go back to personal. What are the, what are uh, Blackberry used to call them? Uh, PDAs, personal. Yeah. Uh, you know that's what it should go back to. Because they are more that than anything else at this point. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for excuse me. So I just told it because I might do it once or twice because I was sanding yesterday, so I still got that bit of uh, you know dust in my throat. So if I run out, it's because I got a cough and I don't want to deafen you guys with the <laughs> microphone. So. <laughs> That's, so, right. that's fine. You'll only be a short delay, and I don't mean to be rude, so I just wanted to let you know. So, okay. no concerns. My favorite yeah, question that Xenia always loves. Our kitchen cabinets. Oh, uh, sorry. Last, last Memorial Day weekend, so last year, it took me weeks to finish our kitchen cabinets, to finish our kitchen. I, I don't know why I thought I could stop and start it's there. It's technically not done yet. Yeah, no, so, not really. There's some parts that I just gave up on and I was done. And uh, it's it's a lot of work and it is, you get the dust and the paint and the, yeah. And everything out of place and my OCD goes oh. right through the roof when things are all array. <laughs> like, yep. even if it's in another room, I know what's going on. <laughs> like, yep. Yeah, we're with you, Andrew. We hate painting. Yeah. Yes. But it, it's so worth it. It's so awesome to see the change, and, and it just makes me feel better when it's done. Oh, yeah. I appreciate a great paint job. Like, Xenia, like she said, she can't paint as much now because of her condition. But, like, she's such so much better a painter than I am. Like, I like a good job, but I'm I, I, I start, I'm very fussy, and then I can see the scale quickly slide as I get more fed up with it. You can tell where my moods were by the walls, almost like. Oh. <laughs> it's, awesome. it's like an EKG yeah, or something like that. I've got a condition like that. that I can paint. I, I, uh, I, like, I like that. Yeah, I've got a condition I'm not able to paint. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder sometimes too. I guess, no, I know she can't. I know I'm just teasing. I love painting. Yeah, she I does. Love, I love painting on canvas. I, I when I have time, I used to do that more a long time ago. But I kind of see it the same way. Just the wall is just a bigger canvas, and yes, you don't really do anything much more than just using one color of paint. But that's how I see it. So I love the process. <laughs> so I guess we'll take them back a bit. Yep. Uh, my favorite question, I know it's an open one, but it's because I don't want to put anybody in the spot. Before, like, where do you guys feel comfortable starting off and just kind of giving everybody a little bit of a run through of what got you to where you are today? Like, you know, where if you want to talk about where you just met or uh, where you just grew up and then kind of just follow through a little bit, just so everybody gets to know you a bit better. Well, you're not wanting to get out of here till after midnight, huh? I'm good. Uh, <laughs> I'm all ears. I you more. Yeah. Um, so we were actually, I mean, we're both uh, uh, born in, in Helena, where we're at now, um, and uh, raised there. Um, we uh, actually, we met in youth group. Um, I, uh, she was going to a, a youth group, and I had a friend that invited me. Um, first time we met um, was at, uh, it was a lock-in at a school, so we spent the night there, played games and everything, um, and 
Tell him what you thought. Well, <laughs> tell him why you came. Because his came, friend said there's going to be girls there. I came to oh. to meet girls, yes. So, you know, whatever. Um, and I, and I, we had just come from a high school football game. I think our faces were painted and everything for the high school football game. Yeah. Oh, I, so um, I, I liked the friend. I liked his best friend. And I thought John was psycho. And I actually I actually liked her best friend. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So That's how so we funny. end up? Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, and so uh, we uh, knew each other for for several years. There's a three year age difference. I'm three years older than her, um, okay. and so when you're teenagers, that yeah. can create some issues. Parents don't like that very much. <laughs> yeah. Right. Parents did not like a 19 year old dating their 16 year old daughter. No. <laughs> um, so we uh, uh, we went out on a couple dates and uh, just fell madly in love with each other. Um, but of course, I liked him way before. It's weird because I started, I don't know how or why, but it, it, my heart just started changing and I started liking him. Oh. And he didn't know about it. He started, he's still like my best friend. And uh, so I started liking him and just being excited to be around him. And he had no clue. <laughs> he was clueless. Yeah, I was pretty clueless. So. <laughs> Because I look back now at all the things, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that was so obvious." Yeah, yeah but guys at that age were not good with obvious, <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, hit guys it at any age other way. Always good and obvious. <laughs> and I don't think we get better with age either. Now that I no, think, of no. it. Um, yeah. So, um, the the girl that I liked actually had told me that uh, Kelly liked me, and I was like, "Well, that's crazy." And I said, and then I started looking at things. I was like, "Oh wow, that makes total sense." And, yep. So we went out on a couple dates and her her parents decided that it probably wasn't the best for us to be dating. Um, okay. And we kind of, uh, we kind of, not that we went, did anything crazy, but we were, we kind of went behind their back on a few things. And we finally went, you know, if we want, if we want God to bless our marriage, God to bless our relationship, sorry, not our marriage, but bless our relationship, then, then we needed to honor her parents. Right. Um, so, so we, we broke up. <laughs> for a few months and and her then her parents allowed us to to start dating again and then i went off to college um so uh, oh. and, um yeah and so we but we we've been together um since uh we started dating 97 okay uh, and god <laughs> my son just said you guys are old <laughs> yeah um, yeah um and then we got we got married in uh 2000 so we will celebrate 18 years here in just a little over a month. So. Oh, that's Congratulations. amazing. Congratulations. Yes. That's amazing. Oh, so, yeah. So we actually, though, it's not, well, it's kind of a confusing story. So after we started dating, I was taking her to where I used to live and uh, to this old neighborhood. And she's like, oh, that's crazy. I, we lived there for a short time. And um, I don't remember a lot of things, but I remember when I was younger, driving by the, or riding my bike by this house and remember this this little girl was standing on the porch i knew she was younger than me but i was like oh she's kind of a cute girl and never thought anything of it again but come to find out that it was that that was the house that they had lived in oh. um, so so i truly believe that it was it was her i saw that day oh um, no, no but that's I'd what like to think that that's way. what i'm going with anyway so that's so cool <laughs> Hey, it's great stories make great relationships. So <laughs> it's all part of it. So oh, that's amazing, though. Yeah. So in 18 years coming up soon, that's that's oh, that's really nice. What is your secret? Yes, I knew that was coming. So uh, grace and patience, <laughs> knowing that nobody's perfect, and uh, we just try to make sure that we uh, communicate and. Do and, the best we can. And, and our faith. I mean, our, our we mm -hmm. have, um, I'm a youth pastor, um, you know, and so I, I, our faith has a lot to, to do with it, realizing, just like she said, that, that nobody's perfect. We all all make mistakes, but, um, and we've just got to be gracious with each other. Oh, that's oh. Nice. What do, oh. When you say patience, what do you would uh, advise or suggest, or what do you do suggest to somebody who comes to you and, and say, that they need more patience. How how do you grow that inside of you? Oh God! Well, it usually problem. comes through. It usually comes through we, trials and yeah. Certain, yeah we always it, it's always kind of a joke that you never you never pray for patience because because yeah. you learn patience through 
through getting through difficult situations. Right. Yeah. You know, it's it's not really something you can just say, okay, I'm going to be patient now. You know, it's it it's comes through. It's a muscle. Through. Mm. You have to work it yeah. every day. I, I don't work like that. Children, I'm in childcare, so when I first started, I was like, oh, okay, God, please, I pray for patience for Billy. He's really hard. And then that mm -hmm. next day, I felt like it was a really rough day. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, that's how that works. <laughs> This is how you 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 get patience is you exercise that muscle every day and uh, not every day. It's not going to be right the same way every day and it's not going to be perfect patience every day. But after a while, you kind of start seeing, oh, wait, well, hey, that wasn't years yeah. ago. That might have been worse, but now it's not so bad. Yeah, we, you, you just got to look at your situation and say, you know, okay, we've made it through this situation. We're going to make it through this one. Uh, you know, we've never had I mean, we haven't had major problems. Um, you know, I, and I think it's because of that. I mean, because, um, you know, we, we do have arguments. We're not, like I said, we're not perfect, but, right. um, you know, most of the time within a day or two, we're, it's, it's all good. We've worked through it. And, um, you know, like I said, we just, uh, we trust each other. Um, and, and we, we just, we know that, that we love each other. And so it's, we can work through those things. River Bend Longbow's uh, Outdoors wrote, I can split rocks with my patients. <laughs> 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 hats off to you see Xenia's high strung but I'm a very patient person so that's how we yeah, that's how we... <laughs> Kelly's definitely the more patient Kelly's the more patient one of, the, of us too that's for oh, sure yeah. I'm, I'm not patience is not my greatest virtue <laughs> Win City said yeah. that I, uh, Win City said I need to hit the gym more often for that muscle <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes we all do. Sometimes even the most patient ones, we still have to remind ourselves, uh, you know, to train that muscle a little bit more. Because <laughs> like Xenia and I, like, of course, she has a European background and it's much more, uh, I'm much more relaxed in general. Slow. Slow. <laughs> I was trying to be nice. I was trying. I was exercising that muscle more than I've ever flexed. <laughs> and when I'm over there, like I pull my hair out because, like, if you have to be in an appointment for ten o'clock, you're not supposed to be there before quarter after, oh. and all that stuff like yeah. that. And here I'm like, I want to be a half hour early and never a minute that late. On time is ten minutes, fifteen minutes early. Yes. Yes, that's right. That's exactly. And people get offended, and she's right. Like, if you were to go in at ten. People can even be offended by that, you know, like the, so I, that's a hard adjustment for me sometimes, like when we're doing stuff. Yeah, and for but, me as well, I think it's, it works both ways, yeah. you know, because I, I, I tend to do things more faster now. Uh, yeah. after, you have, I got uh, full credit after, you know, more than 10 years together, uh, kind yeah. of learned, but, uh, and you kind of sometimes slow down. So I think, as you said, it's a communication, you know, it's a work both. I think, I think you speed it up more than I slowed down. Okay. I don't want to take my time from you. Maybe. <laughs> thank you for the kind words. Yeah. He's a junior pastor. I'm not lying in front of him. Well, it's also giving you know, encouraging, motivating. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's also part of it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> We're still getting back into our chemistry. It feels weird, eh? After a couple of days. Yes, it is. You know, it's funny because we're still mingle the same in the house and that. But when we get on the live stream, it you know, feels what? Like... in a couple of weeks we might start to do our two separate lectures. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning oh, of the lunch. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay, back to you guys. <laughs> Your dog. So that was cool, though. Like you guys' background story. So you married in. Uh, you got almost eighteen, almost eighteen years in. Um, the kids and that. So you're living in the area where you grew up, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, cool. yeah. About the only time um, I went to to school um, about four and a half hours from here. Uh, you know, it was spent, and that's where she went to school too. Uh, we went to the same city, uh, different schools, but in the same city, and uh, we spent about four or five years yeah. there, and then then moved back here. So. Cool. I'm actually growing up in the same, or living in the same house I grew up in too. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> and, how, and how do you like where you live? <laughs> What's that? I was I was asking him how he likes where you're living, like the town and stuff like that. Yeah, I love it. It's really nice. Yeah. It's, it's small enough where it's like quiet, but like big enough to where it's not like everybody knows each other. What's the population around? Well, that's kind of 
So Helena itself is about 25,000, but it's so uh, spread out that it's about in the, the valley, we call it, it's about 50,000. Okay. Well, yeah, it's not too small. I mean, it's a decent size for sure. I mean, uh, it's a, you know, it's not, I grew up in a, in a rural area of like, literally there was 280 in the town that I grew up in. So uh, that's some of those. <laughs> yeah. The, that's small. That's, that's, I've spent most of my adult life in Montreal. So I've, I, yeah, I was, I spent more years here in the city than I did growing up at this point in my life, but and it feels weird because we have we just as I think you guys know we inherited a house a couple of weeks ago back where I grew up. My cousin left it to me, and I'm thinking like, could I ever even live there again? Like I'm, <laughs> it's got a lot of thoughts going that I haven't covered in a long time. So it, it, it's a, it's a big culture shock, and being gone for so long as well. Yeah, how big Montreal? Montreal. Uh, Couple million, I guess. Uh, with, yeah, that's a little bit different than two hundred eighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it was wow. definitely from one extreme to another. <laughs> yeah, wow. We're kind, of, yeah. we're kind of comparable with Boston. I find Boston and Montreal are the like kind of the twin cities a bit because we're a very condensed city. Um, Montreal uh, has a metro system, and we were talking about it the other night. The main street is St. Catharines. And where the metro or subway system connects here, there's like 70 stops, I think. It connects the whole downtown core through a bunch of underground tunnels that go to all the main stores and skyscrapers and buildings. So even during a major snowstorm, the city won't shut down. Wow. And it was built with that. Yeah, it hasn't shut down since 1971. And I mean, we've woken up sometimes to two feet of snow in one night. Mm -hmm. And they can still keep the city functioning that way, so. Wow. Yeah, we call that January. Uh, you, I'll yeah. go check. <laughs> sorry, our daughter. So. Uh, sorry, our daughter. I think I woke up from a nightmare. <laughs> uh -oh. And yeah. checking that out. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> sorry about that. No, that's no all right. it's okay. I wish I could give her a hug. It's okay. <laughs> You'll be yeah. all right. Oh, oh it's okay. And Andrew's there, so... <laughs> Oh, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Sorry I'm about that. It, uh, it just hooks me out of the uh, out of the rhythm too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a bit of a distraction. It's okay. We understand. Uh, so uh, your videos on on your channel. I wanted to get back to that a little bit. Um, you were to say that you're documenting your life and having a little bit of fun, as I was saying on Twitter at the same time. Uh, what what was your the initial intent, like, and of of doing uh, the videos? And are you still there? Like, are you still doing what you were intending to do? Um, I mean, our original intent was, like I said, to have those memories that when our kids go away, um, that we can we can watch that process of them them growing up when we started the videos. Um, and also for them is, you know, they, if they, they move away or, you know, hopefully YouTube will be around still when they have kids and they can show their kids those videos, um, you know, and, and we did a lot more early on of just uh, vlogging, you know, where you just kind of go out and here's what we're doing now and here's what now and you kind of jump around from event to event during a day. Um, and now we, we kind of try and pick one, just kind of one, one thing and kind of do it, um, you know, like. I'm trying to think of some of the things we've done, but, uh, you know, like Kelly and Abby do cooking. And so oh, we'll yeah. just video the cooking, you know, me and Noah maybe outside working on something or doing something else. Um, instead of kind of showing everything, we just kind of focus on that one thing. Um, and which is more, so it's more of a focused video. Um, but I think there's still some times when I'd like to get just more to the, to the random day too. So. Yeah. And I, I'm, I, to me i like to look back we've had a couple of videos where abby and noah were uh singing uh when they were four and two and i just love looking back at those videos it just makes me smile you know um <laughs> like they they get embarrassed but it just makes my day when i watch those videos so i know that when i look back on these it will be the same way also and it helps us to actually do stuff together you know instead of just sitting around doing nothing we, we are like okay come on let's we got to get up let's go do something let's uh you know do a fun thing for the for the video so and that's okay i don't mind making that being our uh our reason for making these our motivation. our motivation yeah, as we said you know talking about how wonderful technology is but 
you know, there's times we're sitting here and Abby's on her device watching something and I'm watching something and we're all on our own devices watching things. And so it's kind of like, all right, let's go out and do something. Let's, let's video something. So it works as motivation too, to, to get up and do something. I think it's a great point you're making about uh, spending time together. It's kind of the new way of quality time, so to say, do you find? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we do a lot of stuff off camera too. Like I said, our kids are active, um, especially Noah in sports. And so we spend a lot of time uh, there. Um, and I always try and film and um, I, I'm terrible at filming their sports. Cause I get so excited. I get so into it that I'm, you know, they're doing something amazing and the camera's pointed at the ground because because I'm too busy watching and yelling at them for them. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it is, it is that way of uh, getting us as a family together doing something. Um, so it is, it is good for that. Uh, I wonder sometimes, and I haven't, I always wanted to ask that to, to people who have a family uh, YouTube channel. So I will ask it to you since you're also a pastor. Uh, I wonder how, how, like, did you have any inhibitions of sharing your uh, personal life and especially the life of your children on YouTube? And I don't have personally any problem with that, but I, I just wonder sometimes if you hesitate sometimes, uh, like doing the video, or was it easy uh, to do for you? For me, it was fairly easy. Um, I'm, you know, I kind of, I've watched, now we've had some, um, people that have come in that have made some kind of weird requests for, Hey, why don't your kids do these challenges and kind of the way they word them. I'm like, um, yeah, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> you know? So, uh, I mean, there's been some of that, but, uh, and like I said, with, with doing the videos, we get to edit, I get to make sure that, that what I'm putting on there, you know, if there's anything, um, that is, you know, not inappropriate, but, uh, could be looked at weird or something, you know, I can edit that out, um, and stuff. So, so we're, we're careful, but um, for me personally, I never really had a, a concern um, about that. I know I was somewhat just because you see those stories, you hear those stories, you know, and uh, you know, bad things can happen and all of that. And I, it does happen, but I think that's not the norm. I don't think, I think that more good things happen like this, like talking with people in different countries. And I know that you can't trust what everybody says. I'm not even sure I <laughs> I believe every single pin on that map. But you know, it's it's uh when you when you start talking to people and you watch their videos and you see how they are, you get more comfortable with it and it's not so worrisome anymore. Um and especially where we live, it's it's not too big of a deal right now. I, I'm, I'm sure that we, Abby and Noah both know the, the dangers of it, um, but we're always on top of it. We make sure that everybody, we know what they're doing. They know what we're doing. Um, as far as electronics go, there are no electronics allowed in the bedrooms. We're all in the living room. Um, well, in the kids' bedroom anyways. Um, so it, we know what everybody's doing uh, at all times. Um, I, do you think of, uh, like you talk about the future, looking back at it, and it's kind of, it's a great, neat way of documenting the family life, but at the same time, like I have question uh, to myself sometimes when we do put, for example, Audrey on live stream, or, or I do share a lot of pictures of her uh, since I'm a photographer, I wonder sometimes how years down the road, uh, she would or would not enjoy me doing it and, and because we haven't ourselves uh, been a part of it you know us growing up internet wasn't a part of uh, our daily life you know we, everything wasn't documented and on the screen so to say I wonder sometimes how how it will be for them you know when everything is there everything what they do is there as they grow up they start tweeting or whatever instagramming or whatever else is going to be there in 10 years themselves how it actually will or will not influence their lives at that point i'll let i'll let them ask answer that i mean we've been doing it for a, you know a year and a half now and, and they're they're both i mean when we both started neither one of them were teenagers and they're getting to that teenage age now um so we i'll let them answer that how they feel about it have you thought about that what it, what it'll be like in the future for you guys i think it'll be cool to look back even though i might like 
embarrass myself. So. Yeah, th and that's one thing that I always think about too for us and for these guys um, is, you know, this is out there forever. It will always be out there. Um, and I know that I can't say for sure, you know, how businesses and companies uh, view your social media and how that affects your uh, employment options. Yes, exactly. Uh, so that's one thing that worries me about it. So just uh, that's, and that's John and I's job to teach our kids how to put yourself out there. What's the best way to put yourself out there? Yes, be real, but at the same time, don't jeopardize your future. Um, yeah, we try and, that you do. and we try and be careful that we don't do anything that, I mean, it's super embarrassing or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, we edit and there's, there's sometimes when, when you know, it'll be hilarious, but one of them will be like, yeah, I don't want that on there. And so I'm, yeah. <laughs> I've got to fight the urge to just put it out there anyways, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting because I oftentimes even ask myself when we do uh, our own like opinions, you know, and share things uh, that, uh, as you just mentioned about employment, you know, you never know what is going to be good enough or not good enough, you know, 20 years down the road, even for what we are saying, you know, uh, as their parents. And, and I oftentimes ask, that question to myself because um, again because we haven't had that experience in our lives uh, I, I wonder oftentimes how, how it will influence you know and then you start thinking well when maybe you shouldn't share as much but then at the same time it is documenting their lives too and I love that that's the part that I enjoy so much right. you know especially for Facebook that is so um, it's dying off for example for people for other people too but we still keep up as a timeline of their lives you know for them when we pass away it's a great way of looking back through the years that they were growing up just uh, sometimes i ask that question often actually to myself <laughs> i know it is kind of a scary thing to think about the future and how that will affect them but um i i it's 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 the future you know it's it's kind of what not that not just because everybody's doing it it's good and it's right and everybody should be doing it but um it's just uh it, it's there you know and and uh if we teach our kids to use it properly then i'm not too worried about it you know and that's that's what we're here for not to that i don't want them to be afraid but i want them to know how to use it properly not not you know have anything happen to them because of it they're they're checking out the conversation in the chat right now there <laughs> hi guys i oh sorry about that i had to go kill a spider so oh the great wow. hero that's right she told me i was a knight so i'm happy so i got my payment so sorry i had to leave you the, the light shining off your armor right now so that's right <laughs> <laughs> always in your little girl's eyes if you can be a knight that's all you could ask for so that's right um yeah and we we kind of we monitor um you know kind of their their online and, and try and watch that uh you know because you do see so many times that uh you know i'm a huge uh football fan and you know comes out that 10 years ago this person said something on twitter and now they're being criticized for it you know and so yeah um, and I think a lot of that's unfair and unjust, but, um, you know, but we do kind of, we, we talk about them and they don't, they don't have Twitter yet. Noah's got an Instagram, um, you know, but we've, we've talked about making sure that, that you're careful what you put out there. Mm. Um, like, to respect people. Yeah. Cause yes. like Kelly said, it's, it's out there forever. It's just like Facebook. I don't get in arguments on Facebook because it's, it's not healthy. You know? Yeah. So. We even backed off from Facebook this year. So we kind of took a break from it. Well, Xenia did first. And I was kind of like, well, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> and I started trying it myself, and I'm like, yeah, I get where this is coming. Um, especially from small, you know, smaller towns, and everybody, know, everybody knows each other's business, and they, they're bickering and stuff. And that really does play with your moods. You see it sometimes, you know, not even directly involving myself with it, yeah. just sometimes reading it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. People have a, a disconnect with uh, social media that um, a lot of times they you know they they'll say things that they wouldn't say in in yes. public or say to your face and they don't realize that that it's still very public that they're saying that stuff yeah, it's true sometimes people you just want to pull them aside and say do you realize this isn't in a private message like yeah. you know <laughs> i can't believe you just put that out there for the world <laughs> yeah and yeah. then they're shocked when their their bosses or whatever see it yeah you know exactly 
Yeah. I mean, how many people even got busted on like uh, uh, what we call CSST here in Quebec, but uh, workman's comp and stuff like that? You know, like they're yeah. supposed to be off on work for a bad back and they get caught water skiing and all these things. Like, you know, just a bit of common sense can get you a long way in life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. what we try to give our kids. It's not telling them always what to do. It's giving them common sense so they can start deciding these things out for themselves. Yeah, exactly. You know? And so I feel that's kind of being missed sometimes with parents are not realizing that our kids aren't getting that and then kind of left to fend for themselves on social media and they can really fall in some pretty big pitfalls because of that. Yeah, and I, I wish, sometimes I wish my kids didn't have social media. Um, I wish that yeah. that would have been a part of their life. But at the same time, uh, I'm a part of that right now. I would rather it be in my home right now than them trying to figure it out without me and John. Uh, here, through that all. Sorry, it's, there's some kind it's of not going to go away, so they have to learn how to live with it. Gonna last. What? <laughs> it's always going to be a part of their lives. I mean, this is just the infancy of it. So, I mean, we might as well get them used to doing it. It's like like getting them to live in a city and never knowing how to cross the street. Yeah. It's not at that point. You're not even. You're just uh, keeping them away from the tools they need to even survive. Yeah, I'm kind of learning along with them because, like we said before, we didn't grow up with this stuff. Exactly. <laughs> this, was, this is, I mean, <laughs> I had the, the long phone car cord going into my bedroom so I could talk to him on the Yes, phone. exactly. So, that's what I grew up with. This is what I do also. <laughs> and there was no instant messaging on my Atari, you know, like. No. <laughs> no. No, no, I no. didn't even have a computer in my home. I didn't have a Nintendo. I didn't have any of that. So, yeah, well, when I first went to college, you know, and she was still back here, you know, I'd have to, we'd have to buy the phone cards, yep. you know, right. 90 minutes phone cards. And 90 minutes did not last long when you're madly in love and haven't seen each other in a while. <laughs> no, we're well aware of that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we know all about that. So, <laughs> they, they eat them up pretty quickly, those cards. Uh, <laughs> questions for your kids there. Do they ever thought of doing their own channel on YouTube? Well, they actually, actually both they actually both do have their own channel. Tell them what you're oh, saying. when I get older, I want to start a vlogging channel. Like, well, what's your channel right now? What is it? Lego Montana. Well, you're gonna have to put up that link after and put it in the, the in the chat so everybody can check it out if you like. It's up to yeah, you. He does. He started out. I mean, he's had this for a while. He had a uh, his entire floor of his bedroom was a Lego city that he had he had built. Oh, cool! Wow, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. No, not really. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, we even, he even has a loft bed so that he could build the city underneath. I love it. Um, and it is we've since condensed it down to now it's on a table under his bed, oh. um, and I think it's about to be condensed a little further. But so that's what he started his channel with, um, and then he started playing Minecraft, and then it was Minecraft videos and um, and Abby. What's yours? Tell them. Abby's Babyland. Mm -hmm. Abby's Babyland. So she loves baby dolls. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and and so, real babies. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so her, her videos are kind of um, interacting with the, the baby dolls and, and uh, like their, you know, diaper changes and stuff like that. So. Oh, our daughter would love that. You definitely have to put up that link for us too. And then we'll check it out. Our daughter would be enthralled by it. <laughs> I know my uh, my sister lives uh, in a different state. She has a two year old daughter, so they'll throw up Abby's Babyland videos or even our vlogging videos. But she'll throw up the Babyland videos, and uh, the two year old just watch them. She just loves watching Abby and the baby dolls, and and Abby will even do kind of sort of reviews of baby dolls that she's gotten and explains them, and and um, just uh, talks about. She knows a lot about baby dolls. So it's right. kind of cool to go to a, a thrift store or something, and she'll know. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good baby doll. Oh, look, and we found a really expensive one one time at, at Goodwill. So it's kind of cool that she knew that. <laughs> Excellent. No, definitely, we'll have, you'll have to share the link, uh, and we'll definitely show it to our daughter tomorrow. Yes. She would really love that. <laughs> you'll have a diehard fan, I guarantee you. Yes, <laughs> sure. Thank you. Yeah. And the Lego, I you're a man after my own heart because growing up, that was my favorite toy. Not a toy. I I hate it when people call it a toy. I can't believe I have it. I, I, I went against my own. Uh, <laughs> that was the greatest thing I ever had in my life. I still have it all. My oldest son had it. He added some, and now Chris has a lot of it. And 
it never goes out of style. It still connects and uh, right. Yeah, that's that's the amazing thing about Legos is they that you know if you had them from twenty years ago and the ones now they still they still oh, work yeah. the same together. We took the kids um, three years ago to where, honey? Oh, we sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you go through your? You should have known. We're done with Legos. You know where I'm going. Uh oh, a villain. Uh, yeah, a I'm not, yeah. I asked the time. What three years ago? Uh, yeah, roughly three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, we're well oiled. Recording it, then you can remember. <laughs> That's right. I apologize. No, I that. didn't know which one he was going to talk about because we are <laughs> traveling a lot, so I didn't, wasn't sure. We went to. It's okay. We were going to uh, we went to Iceland and then after the, we were going to Latvia where Xenia is from and we went to Denmark for four days. We actually went to Bilbun where Lego is uh, made, and wow. it's uh, all it's a little tiny town. It's it's not very big, and you drive around the town and they have all these gigantic Lego blocks that are maybe what sixteen feet long, twenty yeah. feet long, yeah, and they're in farmers' fields and you'll find like two of them like as if a kid had just dropped them. Nice. So awesome. you know, you'll find like the four piece with a three on a corner. You'll find like uh, the three piece with a two on top of it, and it's just all like randomly around, like within like a five kilometer zone. Oh, that's funny. And they're building a new headquarters that's all made with Lego on the outside. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was storming yeah. that night, so we actually spent a uh, night in the car on the side of the highway uh, yeah. while it was thundering because the hotels were too expensive. And, you know, we just wanted to go to the park as, as early as possible. So we spent the night in the yeah. rain uh, in the car. On the the highway. That was interesting. And I think they actually remember more of that than the, yeah, that's the details true. Anything of the else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good memory to have. Yes. Yeah. We, we do a lot. We did a lot of traveling with our kids that way, and it was just that was our thing. But you know, we always traveled kind of light, and we weren't in hotels. It's not. I mean, if we had to take one, we took one, but we didn't go for like five stars. It was always we spent six days in Iceland with no hotel, just a Honda Civic and a four and an eight year old. Wow! <laughs> just driving wow. around where we stopped, we stopped, and yeah. It's it's uh that's our thing we did but we haven't done it lately but hopefully we'll get to do it again soon so definitely uh, do you like traveling sleeping in a car gets tougher as you get older well the young ones was easier for them because they get to stretch out more than we could so they were actually more comfortable I think yeah yeah and so a hot I sorry go ahead I think did Zenny ask about traveling yeah yeah. Yeah, we, we like to. We don't do a, a whole lot. Um, we uh, we took a cruise uh, a couple years ago. Uh, that was for my parents' uh, 40th wedding anniversary. Um, and so there was a group of about 20 friends and family that, that took a cruise um, out of Seattle up to uh, Alaska and then back down and stopped in uh, Victoria, British Columbia. So, oh, cool. Yeah, that was actually the one that Noah started shooting video um for the vlog uh but he, we didn't get much and i i tried to edit it together and it came out horrible but um oh. yeah it's on our channel but, I'm... but yeah we do we do some um we actually were going camping next weekend um and then we're uh this summer some of us are are going to a, an amusement park in idaho um cool. kelly's actually getting ready to start a new job Oh, oh, that's cool. cool. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Thank you. So unfortunately, she will be training while we're on vacation. Oh, <laughs> mom always gets uh, prior, the other priorities. Okay, she, could, she earns the paycheck and we'll spend it. I like that idea. And sometimes time by yourself is okay, too. Okay. <laughs> Let me see. Sorry, uh, Xenia was just sending me. Uh, now we're going to break uh, just for a second. Uh, and... Uh, Breaking in with uh, yep, yeah, uh, with uh, a live ceremony of Rick and Brooke, um, their wedding. Oh, uh, so we're just uh, for a little bit, uh, just gonna pause our show and uh, now the link won't work. <laughs> it's oh. always the way. Let's see if I got it here. Oops. Sorry, I need a bathroom break anyway. Oh, we we apologize for this, guys. It's out of number six, and uh, it says the Lord. 
And the Lord make this face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn turn his face toward you and give you peace. What a promise that Moses gave to Aaron and his sons. And likewise, even though that wasn't necessarily meant for a wedding, but it was meant for covenant. It was meant for to live under the Lord's purposes. Well, as we think about marriage and holy matrimony, God, from the very beginning of creation in Genesis, says, says this, in Genesis 1, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kind, livestock, creeping things, beasts of the earth, according to their kind, and it was so. And then God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps along the ground according to its own, own kind. And God saw that it was good. And then God said, let us. There we go. Um, just a little... Uh... <laughs> Nick to our friends, uh, their special day. Um, we can't be uh, on through their live stream uh, since we have uh, our show as well. But we just wanted to let them know uh, that we are there uh, in our thoughts as well. And big congratulations to the Corn Life Network and Brooke. Definitely. No. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, guys. Sorry about that break. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's so amazing that they're live streaming it. And that's so easy to not be able to look back on that. Exactly. It's it's part of what we were talking about documenting the lives. It yeah. just becomes uh, part so in in involved in our lives, the live streams, the videos that it's literally documenting uh, everything what we're doing including the live streaming of the wedding. This yeah. is so amazing. And there, also, it's a free service, you know. This yeah. is something that you don't have to pay for. You don't have to pay for storage. It's there, and it's always going to be there. This is true, and we take that for granted, like a lot of other things. I mean, Ad Apocalypse honestly was the greatest thing that happened to us because it jump started our channel again. Yeah, it, re it really did. Because I was the same. I remember you guys. We have about the same number. We're both that forty-two story. You know, we were the exact same number, and then it uh, got me wanting to do stuff again it was actually peter mckinnon that did a video about it and really got me started and he said you know like it sucks but you know what this is your chance to shine this is your chance to make it happen and he was right same with you guys yeah it did it made us it made me actually start working it wasn't just you know um to actually go out there do something um and and start growing the channel start working at growing the channel right um, and i've learned a lot since then on on you know getting getting that the word out there and using uh twitter and growing growing your your twitter to get those people to you know so yeah it's it's a lot of work yeah but you guys are doing good at it i i mean you've got a real good uh, good ethic with it and you're with your social media connections and stuff like that and everything and uh it, you're really putting the work in so Should we back? I don't know what was the what was the bet on Andrew leaving. <laughs> 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 they were throwing down odds. What's that? Oh! <laughs> you guys, you guys are funny. Yeah, them cutting away in the video was perfect. We all kind of up and. <laughs> good job. Good job. <laughs> They're placing bets with uh, kids yeah. that are going to bail out. I, yeah. I, I figured that. Yeah, I see where this was going. <laughs> That's well, Twitter is who won the bat. Yep, there's always one who has to. <laughs> so, uh, your uh, your the most popular video on your um, uh, channel is about socks off. Yeah, <laughs> which... yeah we have no idea why that one shot up. Um, okay, because I was just gonna yeah, ask, was... uh, why do you think uh, it uh, shot up so high? Yeah. Like it has three point two thousand uh, videos uh, uh, views. views. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I mean it's not even close to our favorite video. Um, you know, our we went skydiving. I mean, that's my favorite video. Yep, that's pretty amazing. Um, but it doesn't. I, I don't know why. I it's not even. I don't it, know. Doesn't that really burn you sometimes when you think <laughs> about it? And it's a it's an anomaly of YouTube. There's where it really shines out with the algorithm. 
and you can put your heart and soul into something. Uh, that Peter McKinnon guy again, he's a great example because he just talked about that the other week how upset he was that some he loves these videos, but like he went to a week to Kenya, films it all, one of his most cinematographic, cinematic, cinematic, uh, cinema, right. oh my cinematic. God, cinematic. Cinematic. Now we've both there got it go. tonight. Thanks a lot. It's contagious. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god blah blah now we're doing <laughs> and he puts his heart and soul into it and the video is done like you know an eighth of what his other ones do that he just shoots sometimes doing tech tips yeah and it shows that even the big guys go through the same kind of frustrations of this i've had videos i've like killed myself editing and then we're going nowhere and it's like what else do i got to do i got tags they're in the names i put the work in and nobody just seems to want to see it yeah Oh yeah, and that's just it. I mean, that was a video that, I mean, it took I think ten minutes to shoot. Yeah. You know, even, you know, less time than that to edit, and it's the biggest one. And then, like you said, we just spend hours editing a video, and and you hardly get noticed on it at all. So it's it so gets, crushing. It can be frustrating sometimes. That's yeah. Sure. Remember why we're doing yeah. this? We're doing this so that we can have those memories for later <laughs> down the road. But <laughs> also make people laugh. And so. make people Sure. Which is, I understand, and I, you're right, but it's true. Like, when you put all that work into it, it's not, oh, yeah. it, like, I've said the greatest thing about the adpocalypse is not the chance of maybe eventually earning a revenue here. It was people actually finally getting to see some work and going back and even finding stuff I did a year ago. Those comments are, like, the best thing in the world. They make me light up because it feels right. like finally it's getting noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, when we first started going, you know, you, I mean, there's a lot of our early videos that have no comments. And so now it's, and, and some of the comments are, Hey, saw you on such and such. And so I'm following you, but, um, but it is, nice. it is, yeah. it's nice actually getting to interact with some of those people now and, and seeing them actually watching your videos and commenting on it. It is, it That's is nice right. to see that. Cause the numbers run is one thing and yes, we all need the numbers, but I mean, I appreciate th on a thumb symbol with 45 beside it. It's as heartwarming as it can be. But when somebody actually says, like, you know, I love the way you captured this moment, or, oh, I wish I was there, I could read those again and again all day. That They're worth their weight in gold. Yeah. But that's the reason. I remember when, when we, one of our videos first got, a, you know, a comment, we're, like, just so amazed. Like, yeah. wow, that's amazing. And then you get a little taste for it, and you're like, oh okay yeah and then you kind of get bummed you're like well why isn't anybody coming on this video so soon and yep it's kind of de depressed and upset and then i just have to remind myself it's it's just for years down the road and um and to make people laugh and to be a part and, and be an inspiration you know to this to this world but you know um, and the weird it's part cool when you get comments but you will sometimes, you know, it has happened. Somebody wakes up one morning and all of a sudden they're up 20,000 subscribers because one of their videos got picked up by, you know, one of the big guys that got put in a Reddit and, and uh, like, you know, one of the bigger ones seen it or tweeted it just, you know, and then people are like, how did this happen? It was two years ago and now all of a sudden it's booming. There's It's, yeah. it, it's a gold rush and it's the Wild West all mixed into one. There's really no playbook here. Right. Yeah, if that happens, if I wake up one day and was gaining 20,000 subscribers, you guys might hear me in Montreal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was pretty crazy when he actually found out we had a thousand. He I it was just like this crazy jumping in the house, and I'm like, what happened? What happened? What happened? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, that's nice. It's well earned. I mean, there's a lot of work, so you know, well deserved. It is something to celebrate. Yeah. It, because like you say, I know you're doing, like you're saying, it's understandable for memories and that, but it's also nice too. That's like icing on the cake, we'll call it. Exactly, it, yeah. You know, so that's good. Uh, well, I think yeah. you guys do a good job. I mean, it's uh, your videos are great. Uh, how are you guys, do you guys do tags in all your videos? I, I do. Um, and I, again, recently discovered TubeBuddy. Yep. Um, you know, they do the, the mm -hmm. take suggestions, so. Excellent. Yeah. And it really does help. They do a lot. Uh, do, you, do you ever tell them morning fame? Uh, morning uh, fame. Yep. Yeah. 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 Morning fame. It's called. That's it, right. It's by invite only, but we can always give you guys the link for it, and it helps a lot too with that. It's uh, a good. It, it, what like an anal I have a deep analysis, I guess would be the best way to call it on your videos on your channel. Yes. In general. Yeah. It's more visual. I said I just like it better. So we always use them in conjunction. We use TubeBuddy. VidIQ, Morning Fame, and to, to a lesser extent, Social Blade plugin as well. 
Uh, and then you don't have to really buy anything because when you put the three of them together, they kind of do everything for you. Yeah. Wow. So, and it is a lot of work. It's uh, there's so much behind the scenes that goes into a YouTube channel that people don't realize if they don't do it. Making videos is just one tiny piece of the pie. Yeah. So, oh. go ahead. so Andrew, you know, it's been a little bit ago with Stephanie from Best Friend in your thread. Yeah. You know, she was having her closet drinking issues, and you're helping her with. <laughs> watching watching the chat you may want to get uh, gamblers anonymous these guys are yeah. putting odds on everything here yeah there's uh, Wendy Steve was asking to bring the dog back <laughs> they are now betting on the crown beating oh my god almighty this is why we have a dog because if something falls on the floor it's cleaned up within two seconds it's amazing we're better than any there. hoover there's no dog around we're like oh now we have to clean that up <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah. The dog's happy, you're happy. <laughs> and I agree with you. I miss that with a dog, too. That's one yeah. thing I really miss. Yep. <laughs> or if you didn't, yeah, something you didn't like for supper. Else, you go to throw the scrap on the floor and realize, oops, we're not, our dog's not here. Nope. <laughs> now I got to pick that thing up. Throw my scraps on your floor. <laughs> I used to do that with stuff I didn't want to eat. I give it to my dog all the time when I was little. Yeah. Well, yeah. I love pizza, but I'm not always a big fan of pizza crust. So this dog loves pizza crust. When I go someplace, I'm eating pizza, and it's like, well, what do I do with my pizza crust now? Oh my god, yeah, we're, there's no. This doesn't make any sense. This is not working. I love. <laughs> yes, you love pizza crust. So you. <laughs> I do too, and sometimes I will eat his pizza crust, and then then I'll watch him toss it to the dog. I'm like, but I. <laughs> Guess I didn't want that. Oh well. <laughs> next time. <laughs> yeah. Leave <laughs> the dog home the next time. Office, apparently. <laughs> I like you too. I like the crust as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the it's not well, except in pizza, I tend to eat the crust first. I work my way around it. Yeah. Save the pizza for stuff crust. Yeah. <laughs> Well, here in Montreal, they always give fries with pizza. To this day, I can never quite figure that one out. But anyways, fries? I don't know. Huh. Yep. Yeah. And at first, I, I, I thought weird about it, too. But now it's kind of like weird without it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they give you fries with pizza. Huh. That is, yeah, I've never heard that before. No, yeah. yeah. It's always like a, there's a fry option with them, a family or a, like the bag for like small, depending on the size of the pizza. But yeah, almost every time fries come with it on the side. All right, that's fine. I like fries too. Yeah, exactly. It's not that I don't mind the fries. I'm, I'm always up for them. It's just kind of still to this day, after all these years here, I'm still trying to wrap my head around. Because, like, Putin, she loves, and I live here, and it's like the home of Putin. And I, you guys know what Putin is? I've, I've heard it. I've seen a bag of lays that's got that on there. So, yeah, it's like fries. And then, but the original Putin is because uh, the, the fanatics get really crazy if you don't do it right. It's actually salted curds of cheese. Yeah, you only can get that cheese here in Quebec. That's yeah, the proper one. Yeah, and they put those on it, and then they melt it with gravy, and that's that's a poutine. Oh wow, yeah. that sounds kind of good. Yeah, it's kind of not, but the mozzarella doesn't do the same thing. Well, it's kind of is a little bit similar, but no, it doesn't get the exactly same taste. But you can do it with, uh, you know, with a canned, uh, um, what is it, hot chicken uh, sauce? Hot hamburger. Hot hamburger sauce. Hot chicken is fine too, actually. Hot chicken sauce and then mozzarella on top. And then you kind of get the the same, uh, almost yeah. the same feeling, yeah. yeah. That's what we do when we make it at home. <laughs> and then if you want a full-fledged one, you put uh, like peas on top and coleslaw oh. on top. Oh. And sometimes oh. there's chicken there. <laughs> yeah. Cold that's, weather. <laughs> that's intense. Yeah. Yes, but it, but it's really great for cold like weather. It. Well, I like it. It's real now. I'm talking, and I really want it now. <laughs> I should have. I should have never said anything. It's my own fault. <laughs> I would know where I'm going after. Maybe a bed night snack or something. That's yeah. right. <laughs> uh, then uh, D. E. Me calls out of a uh, hotel with a, a too bad internet. I still managed to ask the question: Are you photographers as well? Uh, no, not really. Um, I mean, we. I like taking pictures, but yeah, I really wouldn't call myself a photographer. No. Mm -mm. 
So, like, when you guys are shooting, the, like, you guys didn't do a lot of, like, I mean, family photography and stuff like that, but you didn't do side, like, uh, do you, like nature and stuff like that? You just kind of got into the vlogging with the phone, like? Um, I mean, we, we've taken pictures, but um, sometimes, but uh, with nature and stuff like that. But, uh, I, like I said, we don't, I mean, I I'm, don't even know what I'm trying to say here, so I'm just rambling. No. You're doing great. <laughs> Taking pictures is, is fun and, and uh, enjoyable, but sometimes I, I feel like people, other people take way better pictures than I could ever do. And I, um, I sad. I started looking at the pictures on my phone and I really don't have any really recent pictures. I've kind of slowed down on taking pictures. Whereas before it's like, Oh wow, I can take all these pictures and it's going to be amazing. And have all these memories. And now I just started thinking today I should be printing those pictures. Yes. How many times have I just left them on my phone, never to be looked at again? So I'm like, I should probably get to printing those picture pictures off so that I can have them. And and nature pictures are fun, but I like I like to see people. I like to yeah. see life. I like to see movement. So um, yeah, I think that is one thing is with the the videos that we don't take as many just still photog still pictures anymore. Right. That's that's another part of it as well. Because uh, that's really interesting on the because that's the thing that's kind of the double edged sword with digital. Because back when we did 35 millimeter, we couldn't be as free with our shots, you know, like oh my god, I can't take that because I only got three left. Oh, yeah. yeah, but because you got them printed, you valued your pictures more. Where now with digital, you take so many, they don't quite have the same meaning. I mean, I mean, I know it's our kids and family moments and they're special. But because we take 500 of them, there's not that, like, four or five that uh, always mean so much. And I think that's kind of, like I say, the double-edged sword with, the, with since the evolution of digital photography. Yeah, it could be a good thing and a bad thing. You just kind of don't, can't yep. take it for granted. That's right. It's like anything else in the world. You know, you always say it's, it's a weapon in one hand, it's a reward in the other. So... Mm -hmm. Just and I agree with you about printing them. That's why I thought that was very smart what you said because by printing some of them, it forces you to find those special moments and makes them even more special again, like it used to be. And even now, we really can't even complain about how much it costs to print pictures. There's so <laughs> many sites out there. I mean, we just use Costco and it's 17 cents here to print a picture. It's that's crazy. That's nothing. I mean, I could print off 50 pictures and I could barely spend what. Five bucks, you know. Yep. So it's it's pretty amazing. And I did that. I finally did that this Christmas, where I, we we went and spent the Christmas with my dad in uh, Washington, and uh, it snowed in Washington on Christmas Day, which is pretty darn amazing. Wow. Anyways, so <laughs> lots of snow in Washington, especially us from Montana. We you know we know snow is Christmas time. Always snow at Christmas time, usually. Yeah. Um. So we were kind of bummed we weren't going to get that, but we got it, and I took tons of pictures of. Hmm. all the family there and this is the last year he's going to be in his house i took tons of pictures hmm. and i just print i printed them i didn't i didn't care how many i just print 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 every single hmm. picture print 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 i didn't care if it was blurry or not i printed it hmm. so that i could have it for later because i know looking back on some of my photo albums of, of family vacations it's, it's awesome to look back at those and just you can touch it and see it and, and it brings back those memories a lot easier for sure i agree with you on that one 100 percent yeah that's, and that's good that you did that that's uh it's a it's because it's nice to have things digital but i mean passwords get lost you know you lose connections and that so it's great to have print ones as well well like uh panic d was saying you know make sure you have several backups they just had a major issue is uh yeah uh, with their hard drives crashing on them and losing a lot of uh video footage as well so it's definitely a good idea, you know, to, to have some in print for sure. And nowadays also there are amazing, beautiful photo books you can order and they're not expensive at all. And and you can actually see, you know, have them as, as books in your yep. <laughs> in your shelf, uh, you know, um, uh, years down the road, like coffee books on the table. Well, the same for you. social medias too, because a lot of us today are saying, well, I got them up on Facebook and I got them in Instagram and they'll be there forever. But there's no yeah. guarantees of that. I mean, servers crash, companies go bankrupt. They don't owe you anything if they delete everything tomorrow. Yes. Especially if you're not paying anything for it. <laughs> yes, exactly. And sometimes <laughs> even you are. So it's always good to have multiple places, you know. It yeah. does pay off to back up your stuff because you never know. And it's uh, once they're gone, they're gone. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we're actually – I just bought a 
external hard drive. We had an old one that full of pictures, but I got one just for putting our videos on there. Right. So if we do, you know, YouTube does decide that for whatever reason they don't like the channel and they just delete it. Mm -hmm. So we'll still have those videos. For sure. Because that's another thing too. You guys put a lot of work into this stuff. You know, you never want to lose them. You always want to keep a copy, you know, down the road. And uh, it's um that's uh people people were very good at backing up stuff and at some point in the last couple of years because of cloud and, and and facebook and these ones it got lost along the way and i don't know why because that was a big message you know from like 2005 to maybe 2012 13 i'm just taking round numbers but and then some people just figured i don't know at some point it wasn't worth like putting the effort into backing up their stuff and a lot of people, when you lose that stuff, it's memories that are gone forever. Yeah. Yeah. I think, like you said, it is in social media, you know, and in the cloud, it's like, oh, you've got to start paying this much money to get more storage. And and I, I think with social media, we think, oh, it's it's there. Yeah. I don't need to worry about it. So that's right. It's a vault in their head, you know, and it's not. They don't yeah. know what's the thing. <laughs> no, no, they don't. Mm. They don't. I was thinking a while ago when we were, I know I'm going back, but before I left with Audrey, we were talking about, you know, monitoring our kids on social media and games and the, and Audrey was about, I think four or five and she was just getting into her <laughs> tablet. And you know, those sites where you have like a game, their kids games, but then there's a hundred games on the one page. So she's playing with her tablet and she's doing great and having fun. And I go out of the kitchen and I come back literally about two minutes later. Well, another game had popped up, and this game she had to put together a nine millimeter Beretta before the time ran out. <laughs> what? Yeah, she had the clip, the, the 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 chamber, the whole thing all out, and she's sitting there dragging parts, and there's a little clock going around, and it's like a kid's game. Wow! And I'm like mortified. And the scary part is my daughter would do very well in the Marines. I think I learned that day. <laughs> That's what I was going to say is, how did she do? Did, she, did you see if she could do it? She was well on her way to getting that thing together. Well, I mean, I guess that in, in that game, there are pe pa parents out there who would like their kids to know about guns and guns. Exactly. And like, and all that yeah. stuff. So, you know, that's maybe why that's out there. I don't know. It was just the way it was done. Like, you know, it was so surprising. You know, one was like a kind of a strawberry shortcake type of game. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a twist that I wasn't expecting. You never would oh, Kind of game and the types of games that she was playing, yeah. You know? So it, it just was weird to see it there without any, you know, warnings or anything like that. <laughs> do, you, do you think she even knew? Like, no. did she know what it was that she was putting together? Or did you think, oh, it's another puzzle? Oh. Or, just yeah, exactly. Game. You're so right, game. it was just a puzzle for her, you know. Yeah. But uh, that's just quite interesting sometimes, especially as, and, and the same as YouTube, and they're a little bit better now, but there was a time like couple months ago when uh, you know spider-man and frozen and all that oh, yeah, uh, they were doing some pretty... in a really bad videos and and they were going through the youtube kids app because they yeah. they, they didn't catch on that those guys were making know. a they one of them was making a hundred they had two brothers they made a hundred and eighty thousand dollars in one month and uh yeah one month doing wow. doing elsa and, and uh, spider-man stuff and it was unbelievable how that stuff could slip through the cracks when you had that kind of numbers they had what 80 million views yes yeah, yeah. it's it's crazy yeah. you know and it's hard to monitor yeah. yes it is very much so <clears throat> that's right yeah i mean i'm not that's also part of that, that frustrating thing is that like those videos are, are doing that you know and yeah and and but yet we're youtube well it sort of punishes us lower ones mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and and even YouTube, like I mean, I'm not standing up for them, but I mean, they are a business in the end. They've they've still to this day even never even made a profit. They have to tiptoe the line with advertisers. They got no other choice. And as soon as the advertisers are starting to threaten to pull out, what can they do? They got to make money as well. And you're right, right. we are paying for these guys' mistakes, one hundred percent. But like some get mad at YouTube, but really it's not YouTube getting mad at us or singling us out. It was those guys that screwed it up, and YouTube had right. to blanket. Yeah, yeah, and I I understand. You know, you know, and, but it falls right into what you're saying. I mean, it's it, it's frustrating for sure because we are paying the price for those. Uh, well, I'm not gonna uh, not so smart people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. But you do watch some of these people that just gripe at YouTube and how dare YouTube do this? And it's, yeah, you know, or, well, even those that how would how does YouTube allow this to happen? Well, again, I mean, there's how many billions of watch time every day, and how many videos are being uploaded every day? You know, I mean, yep, it's four hundred hours of minutes. Control everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, how can you monitor that? It's impossible. Yeah. I, re I really think that they're going to eventually start charging uh, us for having the, the videos because, I mean, there's going to be lots of channels there that are under 1,000, uh, you know, subscribers and under 4,000 hours of, of watch time. So for them to keep those uh, channels and videos up on their servers for free without any sponsorship on there, uh, I think they're going to be soon charging for the space. You know, you're going to yeah. be allowed maybe five or 10 or whatever and if you have more than that, then you have yeah. to pay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. I, mean, I don't. I. I don't envy them trying to make those decisions. You know. I, and that's just it. We don't realize all that stuff that they have to to try and do. And you know. I mean, like you said, there's there's videos out there that, that they're inappropriate, but um, that's kind of the nature of the the platform. Is that yep. you know it's that we we want both. We want free speech, yet we want to make sure that that every all the free speech fits with what we want. You know. Yes, that's that's hard to balance that. That's for sure. I I agree. Sorry, um, a biker bushcraft just saying hi. By, uh, hi from biker bushcraft. Yeah. <laughs> so good to have him here. He's been a while. He started a new job, so we haven't seen him in a while. So I just wanted to say a quick hi to him. He can only stay a minute. So, um, you, but you seem pretty in tune with YouTube. You seem to. Uh, you guys, uh, that's hard for a lot of people. I, that's why I like to hear you guys talking the way you are. You're not just putting up videos. You, you work to get an understanding of how things go here. Mm -hmm. And I my, I tip my hat to you because I don't see that all the time here. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, we both worked in, in business. Um, I work in retail. So, you know, I understand how, how business works and um, how, uh, how, how bad it can be. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're when you're trying to make a profit and what you go through to try and make that profit. But uh, yeah, so so we understand it. Yeah, it's um, not easy. You know. It's a balancing. Act. But even the way you guys are connected with it, like working with, uh, you know, you've just taken on TubeBuddy and stuff like that. Because I've always said it's amazing. And channels, a lot of channels we see here, they have a hobby. They do something and they do it great. But to take on YouTube is a big challenge because there is a lot to it. And I think it's very commendable when people really get to know it because that's the only way you can really grow on this platform is to know how it works inside and out. And you guys have definitely done the work. So I think it's... I, that was one of the things that's, you know, again, like you had said, if it wasn't for the apocalypse that um, I, I would have never found out about most of this stuff. Yeah. You know? It's... But. It, it, it did, you know, we can look at it as a bad thing or a good thing, like, you know, you know, make a positive out of it, so. I think it let us discover so many amazing channels that otherwise we wouldn't have seen, you know, because when we started watching YouTube before that happened, uh, we don't have TV really, we use more internet to, to watch TV shows that we like and, and watch a lot of YouTube, but it was mostly bigger channels. And, and I think uh, for lots of people as well as us, it, uh, let us discover these smaller channels yep. that are as amazing, if not even sometimes better than the bigger ones. And now we're watching more of the smaller ones, actually. Yep. Uh, you know, you would never you would never know it's out there. Exactly. Uh, it definitely was a boost for the smaller channels in a way as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Yeah, because that's just it. That was the same. I mean, I watched, um, uh, you know, I, basically one, one, one guy is who I watched and, um, you know, you know, it was a big one. Oh, um, you can but, say yeah, it. So you start finding some of those, those smaller ones, and but I even noticed that once the the apocalypse, even those bigger channels, I, a lot of them kind of disappeared for a while. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so they, I, it wasn't just that small channels were frustrated with the way uh, YouTube was doing things. Um, everybody was kind of frustrated with it. But again, I mean, they're, they're a business. And you got to realize changes are going to happen. They, are well, gonna that's go. it. There's no guarantees. There's no pension plan on YouTube for those guys. Right. <laughs> that's true. <clears throat> Imagine if you were working and one day you got up and all of a sudden you found out you are going to make, you know, 80% less for a couple of months than what you've been making the last two years. It's a hard pill to swallow. Right, right. And you, you scramble to, to try and make up for that. Yep. And like you said, YouTube doesn't really owe you anything. Nope. <laughs> That's true. You're, it's, it's, 
you're we're here by our own will they're not forcing us to be here so yeah uh, but that's normal i mean as it became uh, youtube became more mainstream in our lives it's just human nature to start to th you know we always want to feel something that we can depend on and we just do that with it by it but uh you can't think that way. You got to be going and and always have a backup plan. That's why a lot of them went to Twitch and places like that, especially the more shocking ones. I mean, Twitch was a better working platform for them, I guess. So, but they never gave up YouTube either because tomorrow Twitch could be gone. Yeah, well, and it's just like, I mean, you see in businesses too. As, as things get bigger, um, more problems come in. Yeah. So you can see all these people saying, "Oh, it's easier to get affiliated on Twitch." Well, now it is. Yep. Um, but you know, it was easy to get affiliated on YouTube for a while too, and then That's right. as problems start coming, they've got to change the rules, and yep. you know. So I mean, there's all these that I hear that talk about how great Twitch is. Well, you know, if everybody goes there, they're going to be just like YouTube. They're going to start having the same issues. That's right. Um, so. It's another mad rush to get there, and everybody has kind of already missed the boat by the time they're going to join. I think it's good not to have all your eggs in one basket, as I'm saying, you know, and it's hard to keep up sometimes with doing that, but it, I think it's the best way of uh, getting ahead uh, because you never know exactly. Yeah. We take it for granted, but it's their business after all, and we mm -hmm. don't own anything. There's a channel, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Linus Tech Tips. I think I've heard of it, but I don't think I've ever seen it. He's up around, uh, he's close to 6 million now, but he started off, he's a Canadian in BC, and he started off with a computer channel and went on his own, and now he has over 20-some employees. Wow. And he has three channels going. Yeah, it was a kind of a, long story short, the Canadian computer company, he was working there, and they wanted to do these videos back in like 2008, and they said, you like to talk a lot, let's put you on the camera. <laughs> And they made like four videos and they realized how expensive it was. So they didn't want to look like a cheap company. So they said, let's call it his name, which is Linus, Linus Tech Tips. That way you can shoot it. We'll give you the product, but we don't have to put a lot of money into it because you will make it look like you did it yourself. Yeah. Nice. And then, yeah. So he got to meet all the computer, you know, companies and get product and that. And then when he left, he bought the name and built it up. And I think he's around 22 employees now. Wow. Yeah, and they sure started their own take you. well yeah you know the initiative they have six thousand square feet office they just added another one full studios and wow. what he what he's doing now is he started his own uh server now called float plane so they're going to be hosting their own videos with a pay per service plus doing youtube and they have a weekly talk on twitch so when big people like that are even doing that and diversifying you got to take a hint that uh is something to be watching for. If they're nervous, we should be nervous too. Right. And they're in the know. They're really in yes. the know, it sounds like. I've always said that. You know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. These guys pay money to do this research, so watch what they're doing. You don't copy them, but watch their trends. Yeah. Like his videos, he's he does these things now in all his videos. It's all the big exclamation marks in the camera, like the looks and all <laughs> yeah. that. Weird, yeah. And people, some of these older ones didn't like it, but he said, you know, do you think I like my kids seeing me this way? But we do it for a reason. It showed that it brings in a lot more viewers with that, you know? So always listen to what those guys are saying and use it on your own channels. <laughs> yeah, and that was one of the things I think early on is uh, I tried to to copy what the big channels were doing. Uh, and you know, our videos have got to look like this. And mm -hmm. um, we just you know we didn't have the at that point the the i mean i don't have editing software fancy or anything like that so it's like you know i just got to do what i can do yep um and just just got to be ourselves and that's and, right you know we can't imitate what others are doing that they're already on youtube no and that looks really bad too i see that a lot with small channels not a lot i shouldn't say but i see it some you can't pretend to be something you're not because it always comes off worse than if you could ever be. Being yourself is the only way to go. And if it works, it's going to work. And if it doesn't, don't beat yourself over it. You gave yourself your best shot. Mm -hmm. Right. Because, you know. I uh, think it's more sustainable. Too, yes. Sorry. Uh, it's more sustainable because you only can do it so long, you know, to, to make up something that is not there. And transparency and personal, uh, being personal, I, I think works better, too, for the people that are with you. Yep. You build a better well, fan base. You look at the reality TV shows, and, and I yeah. believe 
really know that those are really even reality anymore. But right. I know that on, on YouTube, I know that most of those people, they're real people. I mean, these this is their life. This is what it really looks like. There's nobody, no producers yeah. behind the camera telling them, okay, now we want this reaction, so you need to do this. No, it's not it's not that way. And you can tell when that comes across camera. Yeah. Um, what that what it is you know if it's real or if it's not real if it's personal or if it's not you know so um, i notice that with i don't watch a lot of youtube myself but um i can i can hear it in the background a lot in the house and um it, you can tell when people are just talking they're just having a good time they want to entertain people but they also want to be personal and they want to be real so it's it's refreshing <laughs> and you guys are TV. you guys are a great example of that because family channels you guys are doing it right. It's very honest what you guys do, and that's what I like about your channel. Because I see them once in a while, these family channels, and it's like, you know, you can see the kid doesn't want to be there, and it's like, hey, we're the bah. You know, it's so put on. It's not real. It's like they're trying to recreate an 80s sitcom, you know? And it's, <laughs> it's awful. The kid, it's painful to watch. It's you can't connect to it. The kid looks like they would rather be anywhere there. It's like they it's almost like you can picture them telling the kid it's 20 takes and we want to get this right. Do you want to get big on YouTube? You've got to smile more. You gotta, you know. Yeah. That's why I like you guys' channel. You guys do it right. It's comfortable. It's just like a glimpse into your life. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. That's probably why we only do about two videos a week, is because that's about the only thing we can get. Everybody can get motivated for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of work, you know, to get all four of you in the room doing stuff together. Or, you know, I mean, I know not every single video you're all together, but mostly are. So two a week is a lot. And you just make it well, work I quite thought, well. You know, as, kids, as our kids got older, I thought, you know, when they're young, they're running around. You're trying to chase them all the time. Life seems crazy busy. And then when they get older, like, oh, it's going to slow down. No, it doesn't. It doesn't <laughs> no, slow down. It gets crazy. It calm down. That's it's right. Crazy. You have to take them to. And. They're growing so fast. You got to keep buying more clothes and buying more food. And yeah. It's it a never ending journey, my friends. <laughs> yes, yeah. it is. But I am blessed. They're healthy. They're happy. You couldn't ask for anything more. Yeah, for sure. For sure. We have a, uh, well, 7, 11, and a 20-year-old, so don't say there's an age that we don't understand or yeah. answer. And believe me, the 20 gives me just as much worry sometimes as the 7. And Yeah. Sometimes more, because now he can drive and live on his own, and I, you think oh. it gets easier? No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, no. I work with preschoolers. That's my day job. That's what I do. <laughs> Oh, really? I, I go to church and I help out in the youth group with the teenagers. And like, I tell my teenagers all the time, I said, guys, my preschoolers are listening better than you. Why is that? <laughs> teenagers are the hardest. <laughs> yeah. They got you know, blinders on and earmuffs. They become brain dead. <laughs> yes. I wasn't going to say it, but they nailed it right there. Yep. You know, yeah. It, you can't get through them. And the more you try, the more they block it out. <clears throat> Sorry. I think Mark Twain once said that when my kids became teenagers, I'm putting them in a barrel. To feed them <laughs> a when they turn 16, I'm plugging up the hole. <laughs> I wish I had to talk to you a long time ago. <laughs> oh, my God. Even my oldest comes over here, and he's living on his own, and he's going to tell me once in a while, Andrew, he's 20. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. worry so much. <laughs> Let it go. He's living in his own. <laughs> it is. It's tough. I mean, they are. They are our kids, and we so want. Uh, you know, we always want the best for them. We we never want yep. injuries. Um, want to solve know. all their problems so they don't have to cry and be sad. But that's not life. Yeah. No, that's right. It's so important for them to learn skills, and that's something that's missing a lot. Tay, we were just talking about the other night. Yeah. As much as you love them, they've got to figure out things for themselves. They got to learn that you can lose at something. They got to learn the world isn't always sunshine. Not you want to make them jaded, just to yeah. have experiences in those areas because that is part of life. And a lot of kids aren't ready for the hardships of not getting a job or getting fired or money not coming in the way they thought it would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they, they don't know. They don't know how to. No, nope. with failure. 
right. <clears throat> like we were talking with Singshare uh, the other yes, day too right. uh, about uh, the subjects that should be taught at school, you know, and and. I personally think that, that there's lots of missing into everyday life skills, like cooking, for example, uh, have been uh, erased from schools, but but lots of kids don't even know how to make their own supper, you know, when they grow up, they yeah. and then they go and they spend more money on, on ready-made food, for example, yeah. or even budget planning. Why a part of the high school curriculum is not budget, uh, budget planning, you know, it's, yeah. it's things that you would need to know or make or do taxes you know things math, like that math that we're using every day everyday yep. life that's yeah, math we need and i don't use great. geometry very often no. and so yep. calculus i mean we used to have those things in school we used to learn how to balance a checkbook and things yeah. like that basic accounting i mean that's true life skills yeah, yeah. but they don't anymore and that's weird because uh, i mean Yes, it's good to have math, and yes, all of the subjects they develop your thinking, you know, and your brain. But at the same time, how much are you going to practically be using it? It's great to have these skills, skills that you can go and use right away, and know that you're going to succeed, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for a long, long time, I've, I've thought they need a life skills class in, in schools. Yep, and we used to have them. I don't know where it ever got thrown out, or it almost seems like it goes to the lower not lower kids class but like i don't know it's it just seems like it's fallen right off the priority list and i can't figure out why yeah. but and a lot of parents don't have it either like they're getting bad advice from their parents you know the parents have trouble with money and they're teaching their kids how to be bad with money and or responsibility yeah but i guess that's our school <laughs> systems today yeah and I, I mean all that is i mean it's also, it's not just the school's job. Like you said, a lot of the parents don't even know those skills, so they can't pass them on to their kids. So. Yes, that's right. Our baby boomer generation left behind some really bad apples in the mess sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> how, many times, how many times do you hear about a parent now calling and trying to get their kid a job at a place? It happens a lot more than it doesn't. Wow. Yeah. I would have been more... Sorry, we're you. Yeah. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, sorry, it was breaking up. That's why we couldn't hear you for a sec. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, it's just, but again, it goes back to we don't, we, we want the best for our kids. Um, and we don't always realize that letting them fail sometimes is what's best for them. So, right. This is so right I what love you're that. saying. You put it perfect. Without making mistakes, we can't learn. Yep. That, the, that's so right. Yes. I think no, a lot of people are afraid to make mistakes, and therefore they don't really learn as much mm -hmm. because they're afraid to do that. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we, we don't realize how much failure is actually a part of success. Uh -huh. um, you know, the, I mean, if you look at inventors and, and throughout, I mean, um, all these guys, that they, they fail at things, and that's how they learn from them. You know, it's just kind of like earlier where we talked about patience. It's kind of that same thing with, with, with that, you know, is that you only learn patience by doing that stuff, you know? And so a lot of times you only learn success by, by going through all those failures first. hundred percent. I was saying that the other night, we we're talking about things here, the TV show, well, in Canada, drag is dead. And now they have the States shark mm -hmm. tank. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Some, uh, you love those? Yeah. We've watched them. Yeah. <laughs> People don't realize that one was started in Canada. No. That's like that that's hidden. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> it's called Dragon's Den? Yeah. Oh. Just saying. Yeah, I, I get that. Yeah. It was, and now they have a British version too. <laughs> oh. But a I couple of like, this all be the same. I guess we don't share TV shows very often. <laughs> <laughs> like the Canadians one, though, there's a couple of the Canadian, the, the, the two guys, I think, are the, still the Canadian ones are still on it, I think. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then in Canada, the other guy is the guy who owns Boston Pizza. He's a Canadian. Hmm. And now I don't know the other ones anymore. It's been a while since I watched it. Yeah, they change now every season. There used to be, for I think, for four years the same crew. Oh, at and least. Now, yeah, yeah, at least. And now they're changing. But like they're, wow. those guys, when they sit and talk, they talk about their failures, and they're very proud of them because that's how they built their business was on their failures. Yeah, very true. Very true. You know? It's no shame. It's just been taught kind of as a shame to people. That's mm -hmm. too bad. 
And plus with video games today, I mean, everything is instant gratification and it's all about winning. <laughs> There's no journey. Uh, yeah, you guys' camera was doing the same as ours was doing the other night. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. There you you guys did good. You didn't know. Yeah. But we just haven't gotten that far yet. Our, so. our tripod's getting a little wore out, so we kind of got to tape it to hold it in position. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you realize ours is sitting on two boxes? <laughs> awesome! Yay! <laughs> we actually feel really good. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like I said, we never planned a vlog. We can prove it in a heartbeat. Just look at our setup. <laughs> yeah, you literally should see it. It has a mini tripod under it, but then it's it's stacked on boxes. <laughs> well, you gotta do what you gotta do. You make it work, you know. <laughs> I call that MacGyver. I don't know. We just MacGyvered it. I love it. That's, That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> tripods are a pain in the butt. I just, even other people I watch them, I and it just doesn't seem like tripods last very long. No. No. They, I, I don't know. I think they're more trouble. <laughs> yes, than they're worth. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, especially when you have a dog, then you're like, oh, don't run. No, don't knock oh. it off. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that would be a bad with a dog. Yeah, a dog without any fault of their own, meaning to just one tail swipe. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And that's hard because then it goes over. You're upset. The dog couldn't be happier. He was just happy to see his. Yeah. Who's paying attention to me? <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. So what's you guys' plans for the summer? Yeah, I know you have a vacation coming up. That's in the near future. What else do you guys got going on? Um, We... Uh... Uh, we have some friends that do a chuck wagon cookout. Uh, oh, we're gonna help them with that. That's a that's actually the same week we go on vacation. The end of the week we'll be there. Uh, it's at an old kind of like an old west town, um, and we're gonna help them help them with that. We've done that the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, that's fun. Everything's in Dutch ovens, um, and so that'll be kind of a a fun thing. Um, and we've got a lot of videos we want to shoot. Mm -hmm. um, it just we got to get through the rainy season, and so we can get outside and do some of this stuff. So. Oh, that chuck wagon sounds amazing. Oh, it's the best it's, time. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot of work. We you, we start cooking at about 8 in the morning and go till, till 5, um, you know, and then we serve. Uh, about 40 people yeah, come to 40, the chuck wagon. 40 to 50 people. Um, oh. And there's, there's like six different chuck wagons, and so it's kind of a competition that they do. Um, and you serve about 45 people, and uh, you've got, you do a meat, beans, bread, dessert, and potatoes. Yeah. Um, and so it's always kind of, everybody does their own, own, you know, twist on it, but it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. When you go, they provide, they provide the meat and the flour. They provide a lot of the food. They give it to you. You have to go get your food, kind of like a cooking show. And then you bring it back to your chuck wagon and prepare everything. You already have your idea of how you want to do it. And the interesting thing about chuck wagons is the way that you prepare your food and the ingredients that you use, it has to be the way that it would have been done back in the cattle drive days when they oh had my. chuck wagons. So you can't just go get ready-made cake mixes uh, right. to make a dessert. You have to use what they had. So it's that kind of be, a, a you guys are gonna, mind thinking about it. You're going to film this, right? Yeah, we will. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That really sounds awesome. I've I, never heard of that before. I'm though. so hungry right now just thinking oh, about I it. Mean, the food in a chuck wagon is the best. I oh, mean, yeah. it's amazing. It's the best food ever. And um, the biscuits all oh, melt in your mouth. I'm going to start drooling. Here. I know. Um, you're not the only one. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. always good. Like I said, there's, it's a competition, but it's kind of the same people that do all of them. There's usually two or three a year. Okay. Um, so everybody knows each other and everybody's, it's a friendly competition and, you know, they'll bring over what they're making. And it's like, Oh, here, try this. And so, yeah, it's, it's good. It's fun. Amazing. That sounds, I can't wait for the video. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I'm eating something together. while I'm watching it, but <laughs> it won't be the same, but at least I keep my hunger down. That's, yeah. that's the end of July, so. Oh, that's, I'm definitely. Looking forward to it, for sure. If I miss this video, you don't see a comment within the first 10 hours, I want you to send me a message, okay? All right, all right. Promise me, because I'm really looking forward to that. Now we've got to really make some good video here. we got to get some good stuff now. I'm <laughs> looking. The pressure's on. <laughs> You guys do great work. I'm not worried about it at all. And I, it just sounds so amazing. I love anything like that. I uh, That's right up my alley. So Yeah. And the history of it all is, is pretty amazing that the 
amount of work that they put into their chuck wagons is it's a really amazing thing because they do have to have their chuck wagons authentic also they get judged on their chuck wagons they even get judged on their attire that they're wearing while their chuck wagons or the judges are walking oh, around the chuck wagons so really, it's really all authentic stuff. cool yeah it's really neat and i love history i mean Little House on the Prairie, that was like, oh. I yeah. love it. And, uh, all yeah. that stuff, all the historical That's fiction, good. it makes my day. Um, the show we watch? Yeah. Wind Calls the Heart. Yeah. Wind Calls Heart. Have you guys seen that? No. no. Wind, call, wind Calls Heart? Wind Calls the Heart. It's a Canadian show. Yeah, it's I figured it. you guys would see it. It's, it, uh, it's on Netflix. Um, it's just really? a, a, a show that uh, was is based on a book by Jeanette Oak. And uh, it's it's a historical fiction Thing, but so. it's it's set in Canada. Yeah. Oh. Don't ask me where. I have no clue. No, it's but uh, definitely we'll check that out. Definitely though. we'll check it out. They, Abby absolutely loves that. She's watched the entire series like three or four times. So. Oh, oh wow, wow, definitely got to check it yep, out. We will for yeah. sure. I mean, I'm yeah. not sure how historically accurate it is, but you know, there's some. I'm sure there's some license there as far. It's as got a Mountie, so it must be accurate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's got all the right. I only think he's not drinking Tim Hortons. That's all he's missing. And he'd be <laughs> That's true. I don't think that. Yeah, no, I don't know about that one. <laughs> That's not even Canadian anymore. Now it got bought out by a U.S. conglomerate. So it's not our Canadian coffee anymore. Oh, I didn't even know that. I don't think I've even had Tim Hortons coffee. No. So I'm not even sure what that's all about. They're starting I've to come about it, but Yeah. Well, it was like the. It was like the, what was that, Folgers? It was like the Canadian version of that. Like every time it's always somebody sitting in an arena picking their kids up at four in the morning drinking a coffee. Nice. So it was, everything was so like Canadiana. Like. <laughs> yeah, but they got bought out and now it's kind of going down. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's not, we Americans ruin everything. No, 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 no. no, no. no. They, no. they did it themselves, uh, no. actually. They did it themselves there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, on the province of Ontario, they raised their minimum wage to $15 an hour, and they actually uh went against it. And then they started cutting all the breaks on their employees, they started cutting out free coffees, everything to re recuperate the money instead of raising the minimum wage fairly. So then people started boycotting it. Oh, and it went from number two, it went from number two franchise in Canada to I think it's 51. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they're yeah. working hard now to get it back, but I, I doubt that's going to happen because. Uh, well, with so many uh, coffee companies and, and, and home roasters and people making their own coffee and, and starting their own businesses out there, it's going to exactly. be very difficult. Yep. It's like uh, microbreweries. Coffee's going the exact same route now. Yep. Becoming yep. designer and gourmet style mm -hmm. is the big thing. Yep. And yeah, you got coffee shops everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yes, and popping up everywhere for sure. And I, I was coffee, so I could care less. I was yeah. just going to ask. No. I did it my whole life. I'm 44, and I just started drinking about a year ago, thanks to Xenia, who got me hooked on well, it. Well, I life. started to drink, really, because of you, too, because I came to Canada, and I was falling asleep, literally, at the, uh, you know, at the kitchen table at the supper time with my in-laws-to-be. Uh, so... <laughs> So you're saying they were that boring that they put you to sleep? Is that what you're saying? No, yeah, but uh, you're because saying. of the oh, yeah, very funny, and uh, because of the time difference, our eight hours was exactly the seven. right. Well, seven for the last time, okay, seven. seven hours. Uh, where to where? Oh, what's that? Where, where from? What's the seven-hour difference from where? Uh, Ex Xenia's originally from Latvia. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, above Poland. Yeah. That's where our name and our uh, of our company Pusha Studios. Pusha is the the town in eastern Latvia where her mom grew up. Oh wow! Okay, cool. Yeah. So, so yeah, she was falling asleep. That's true. It yeah, and that, that's why. I, that's the only reason why I started drinking coffee. I wasn't really. I was having every so often maybe a cappuccino or something just for a treat, but not like a coffee drinker. So it really was because of you. <laughs> <laughs> then I wouldn't stop when we traveled to my parents' house, for instance, which yeah. is about 850 kilometers or, what, 550 miles. I would stop once for gas, so she got me hooked on coffee, so I would stop more. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I'm the one that usually has to stop. <laughs> oh, you're the stopper? Yeah. Yes, he is. 
Because I'm going to drink something when we travel. He's not so. allowed to do that. If we want to get somewhere, he's not allowed to drink. <laughs> That's what I tell them, soda. too. I, I drink soda. I don't. His soda, if he, I, he's not allowed. He can have chocolate milk. That's okay. But soda is not okay for him to drink on long trips. It doesn't, it makes for lots of bathroom breaks. Yes, yes it, does. it does. It's oh, crazy. Gosh. I didn't really think it it mattered, but then I walk, I'm like, this is for real. <laughs> we just stopped. It's good though. When we go on youth trips, we've got another helper of ours. It's a good friend of mine that he actually has to stop more than me. So oh. that's good. I blame he takes some pressure off. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have stopped, but since he wants to, we're going to. Yeah. Pretty much. Oh, that's yeah. what it sounds like. And then, and then if. It goes the other way. If the friend's like, well, I don't have to stop, but he needs to. I'm like, are you kidding me? I just want to get there. Well, that's like Xenia because in Europe, nobody goes because the gas is so expensive. Nobody does drives like they, we do here in North America. Oh. So, like they had our country home was, what, 80 kilometers away. Yeah. So what, 50 miles, I guess. And they would stop and have lunch halfway through and all this. Like I was... Wait till she gets to Canada and sees what a drive is going to be like. The first time my parents, I thought she was going to take cardiac arrest. <laughs> <laughs> like we're going and it's like an eight and a half hour drive. And she's like, oh, look at this house here. <laughs> we're not stopping. I've seen this 10 million times. Like, like <laughs> too bad. Schedule. We got to get there 15 minutes early. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Exactly. That's, exactly. Right. that's, that's the right, right thing. Exactly. That's what it is. Yeah. It's crazy. And we'd be driving. I've done it so many times. We'd be in the middle of nowhere, and I'd be like, oh, look, that guy put up a new garage, you know, because I've just seen this drive so many times. Like, I don't want to stop for nothing. Yeah. No. Uh -uh. I want to get the destination. Is there? I like driving, but the destination is what I'm waiting for. So. Well, haven't you heard the saying that the joy is in the journey, right? I've heard, I've heard that. Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. <laughs> I've been made. I've been informed. <laughs> we love going places, but we don't like. I I don't like traveling. We're horrible. We We're both like as soon driving. as we get in the vehicle, it, it's bad. Oh, yeah, it's so. bad. So that's like, yeah, maybe that's not fun. Car seat to get it to fall asleep. Yeah, that's us. As that's soon as we start driving, we're out. Even coffee doesn't help me. <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh really? I that's... can't stay awake. I try. I mean, oh. when we're driving, yes, of course we do. We, <laughs> We yeah, technically sleep, but we'll do a little bit better. I promise. I'm a safe driver. I yeah, but but um, you don't like get you don't get off on the long run. Like it's not the excitement into it. You still feel like drained, and it's not as enjoyable. I want to get there. I, I'm more of a destination is the place to be. Yeah, the journey. See, we used yeah. to take off all the time when uh, since the kids were little. Literally, my daughter, like a couple of months old. We've always been like that. Like I would come home from work and say, "Hun, we're leaving," and we'd pack a bag and take off for two, three days with no plans where we were going, and just go. Sometimes we would even just sleep in the car for the night. Yeah. Too late for a hotel or too far to go to another one. So I guess they kind of grew up doing it. So they are pretty good in the car. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, we've done it there and done it across Canada. Like, Xenia's been here since 2008, and she's been in every province in Canada except for Newfoundland. And we've been in, wow. what, three states? Yeah. yeah. We'll just try to explore the country, I guess. Uh, yeah. And for me, especially because I haven't grown up here, it's very interesting to, to see and yeah. to, to experience. I get to see it through your eyes. I've done them before, but getting to see it through her again is fun. Like, when I took her to the Rockies... I've never seen somebody so excited in their entire life. Because Latvia is very flat. They have one hill. And they call it a mountain, but we'll say <laughs> hill. <laughs> yeah. They would go nuts over there if I said that. I'd be in a fight for a week with them if they were to say it. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, when she got here, the highest mountain she because we have the Appalachians here as well. And that was the highest mountain she had ever seen in her life. And then when we seen the Rockies, it was... yeah. I, but I would like to go down to the States with her because I've gone through there by truck when I used to be a truck driver, but I've never gone like, uh, you okay, babe? Oh, sorry, our daughter. She's having a... I got sick. You, you got sick? Okay, thank you for sharing that. Oh, no. No, so, I don't think so. No, I, think it's, I don't think she did. Sorry about that. Her stomach is upset. Oh, no, that's okay. Don't, don't be sorry. No, goodness. This, this is we the joy of doing family. live family things. <laughs> 
I was going to show you guys when you were talking to Chug Wang, and I was home last week uh, to where I grew up, and I actually got to have a few of these. We They only grow for a couple weeks a year. They're called fiddleheads. Fiddleheads? Oh, here. I'll put There's a picture of them here. And they're ferns, but you pick them before they turn into ferns. There's only like a certain kind. Oh. They grow. Oh, yeah, those were in the book. And we eat them a lot with salmon every year. It's kind of a tradition. And you pick them before they grow out. And they kind of taste like asparagus mixed with kind of like maybe spinach. Huh. It's like a snail. Yep. <laughs> and then you see below here is where they open up. Like once they do that. Oh, yeah. It's too late. But if you have them, you can break them off all summer. Some people keep them by their house as long as it's like a damp spot. And they just keep growing and growing and growing. Wow. And you, uh, they, they grow where uh, floodplains are. It needs to flood in the spring. And then when the water recedes, then they grow. Yeah, it kind of sounds like a, not necessarily a like where a mushroom, but a mushroom would need to be where it's really nice. Yes. yes, that's right. 100%. Same, same kind of like dark. You know, real like dark, earthy ground for them. So, would you Here's eat the... that, John? I'd probably try it. But... <laughs> Abby, Noah, no. I didn't like them when I was young either, so don't feel bad. I only grew in my twenties. I finally, when I was growing up, I didn't even want to see one on my plate. But I guess <laughs> that was kind of a bit of a taste of home. We always had them with salmon and uh, white sauce. My father was a guide for salmon fishing for over twenty years. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. Yeah, he was a fly. Uh, he tied flies, and he was a guide. So that was kind of. But now you can't have salmon there anymore. It's only catch and release, so you got to buy it. So. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, to protect the river, they decided because it employs a lot of people in the town, and it's it's a mostly American, uh, like Oscar De La Rante, the that just passed away, the the clothing designer. Mm -hmm. He he would be there every year. He came fishing. Bobby Orr would fish there, and people like that. And, oh wow. The DuPonts. Yeah, it's a lot of old uh, old American money, I guess we'll call it, you know. The old Kennedy friends, you know, that used to do all these hammering <laughs> things. So, yeah. So, yeah, they do catch and release. And the, and even the guests that come in, and they're paying a couple of thousand dollars a day, and they catch and release. And wow. I guess that makes them real sportsmen, I guess. So Yeah. You know. Because uh, Canada stopped a lot of its salmon fishing on the edge, but the problem is as soon as they go out in open water, then you had all the other countries, and like, you know, Japan, Finland, Russia, as soon as it goes into international water. So you can do all the conservation you want, but if not everybody's doing it, yeah. right? Yeah. you know, you're just leaving more fish for the other guys to take, basically. So. Exactly. I'm back. <laughs> oh, she Okay. Yeah, she's okay. okay. Uh, uh, we uh, because we have to rearrange some furniture because of the painting. She gets anxious, uh, so that's why I think she's getting trouble sleeping. Yeah, no, me too. <laughs> so sorry about that. Mm -hmm. That's very understandable. When change happens for little ones, they don't like it. No, no, no. no. Oh my God, no. I don't like change. No, say yeah, say, especially that because everything is just sprawled over the place. Everything you used to be able to grab in two seconds, now you dig. And I think you'll agree as well that men are not good at looking for things in the best of times. <laughs> I'm, I'm going out on a limb here, but I'm going to put myself on the limb. <laughs> so what then you said. Yeah. What is it you say? We look through stuff. We don't look. Oh, you only see what is in the plan a first plank. If anything <laughs> hides behind it, yeah. it's not there. It's like a different world. Or under, yes. Or oh. under. It's only here. Nowhere else. <laughs> yeah. It's always fun with kids in the morning. I can't find my shoe. I look yeah. everywhere. Really? Yeah. <laughs> backpack, it's under there. Or it's under that sock. Under that sock. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> or it's on your foot, even better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. yeah. And boys, right from the get-go, it's not just men. Boys, right from the get-go, I don't know what it is. It's contagious because they all have it, and it's so frustrating. Even me, that can't that I do the exact same thing as them to watch the, my son get ready for school in the morning. Oh. I, girls just seem to kind of get it together. I don't know in that one. Boys are not. I would say it's about fifty-fifty. 
That's why oh, yeah. us guys need it, those those ladies in our lives. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I think it's all about balance. I call it job security. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. She's younger than me, so I always said Xenia is my retirement fund. I know oh, oh, nice. Yeah. How do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. I guess it's good. Job security. <laughs> What's the age difference between you two? Ten years and six <clears throat> days. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's a big... you couldn't tell. I aged so much with you. Oh <laughs> my god! Oh my god. <laughs> awesome. I you have some great me. years here because of him. I'm sure. <laughs> oh uh, my god! Uh, uh. The 18 years, you guys know each other pretty well. Yeah, uh, I guess so. Pretty well. A well-oiled machine, I would say. Yeah. Hey, bottle caps. It's not happening. Uh, Dad, if you can see this, I just want to play some video games with. Well. <laughs> oh my god that's funny for bottle caps to have an opinion this is a first <laughs> and it wouldn't be a channel without him he's our he's our we always say he reminds us of the old guy in the muppets that was up in the balcony the two old <laughs> yes. guys in the comments i can just picture him in front of his computer doing it <laughs> about doing this live stream you've got this video this chat going on here then you yep. got this chat going on here and where it, do you it, i don't know i yeah I, that, i'm just like i have to go from top to bottom left to right yes all this scatteredness is is working my brain <laughs> and that's what's happening with us like i say it's been a couple of days i feel like we're so off our rhythm tonight so i do apologize to you guys oh no it, i don't have any this is my first time, so you guys are doing great. <laughs> well, you, you guys are you doing guys phenomenal. Are you guys great. are carrying us tonight, so I thank you. <laughs> I, and plus, even changing the room around, like Tom, what changed? Now we're like tables in a different area, yeah. and moving stuff. All that feels so strange right now. And even the background color. Uh, it colors my skin. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, WJ Auto Works is here. He helped us paint last night. He's a friend of ours. Yeah, he's making real cheese. That sounds good. We already, we're already hungry. Don't talk about more food. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. His grilled cheese is something. What did he say last night? Toast, and then he just puts two slices of cheese together and calls it grilled cheese. His wife was so pu puzzled by it. <laughs> How is it grilled? Yes. <laughs> oh. That's as makeshift as you can be. Yes. He's excited because he joined the channel. Basically, he doesn't have any videos. He just did it so he can talk now and then. And he's got 11 subscribers. He thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> Is that another one of those weird YouTube things? Yeah, 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 exactly. Everybody's on the run. They, they, they don't even, that shows you that some don't even look at the channel or some just think, oh, well, he'll have something coming soon. So, <laughs> yeah. He actually could make a channel about how to fix the car. <laughs> yes, because he is a mechanic. So yeah. I've told him before you should start Certified making Certified mechanic, actually. So, that's, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have that in our chat sometimes. Some of the, our friends will come in that they don't have a channel, but. Right. And they'll be like, well, I'm supporting you now. And they're like, yeah. okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they end up getting a thousand and never even had any content up. You yeah. Know? And that so, might make us a little upset. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I agree. I think that would be my breaking point too. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't been pushed. We haven't done as many in a while. We were growing fast, but now, I mean, we're still growing, but we are the live chat. People don't realize just how much time it does take doing the promo videos every day and getting people signed to come on and, and getting all their information from them and people canceling and bringing on. Oh, others. by the way, if I haven't answered your Twitter message, because I haven't checked them in the last two days. So <laughs> if anybody out there, I know that I see them, but I haven't answered them. Like uh, <laughs> it's been, been a little busy with painting and all. So <laughs> it's been nonstop. And like I say, we inherited that house and it's 800 kilometers away and we're running back and forth between there and, Wow. All the paperwork, and uh, I brought a truck up. I inherited the truck. Now I got to try and sell it, and I'm just like, 
I don't know where the day is going. Like, there's no time. For uh, uh, what What is your secret for for your days when they get hectic? What do you do? How do you? Uh, um, yeah. You know, how do you tune yeah. out of everything? For me, usually I just curl up in a ball in the corner and cry until it's over with. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> you have to stay in there that long. Suck my thumb. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to be in one of your when you're ministry servants when you're giving it like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can think it can be pretty bad. But you know, most of the time I think we try to stay calm and know that the day will end and all will work out for the good. Um that's usually how I try to put my my spit on things. I know that uh, I'm not in control of things ultimately. I know God is and so I that gives me great calm and assurance to just keep going throughout my day and push through it, you know, and know that there are other people out there that are having it way worse than I am. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. That's a, it's a message that sometimes we do have to remind ourselves about, and it's true. That's a very yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you just kind of try and roll with the punches and uh, just know that, you know, like I said, we, uh, you've been through so much that, you know, that, that things are going to get better. You know, you may be going through a bad time or, or a stressful time, but it's not going to last. So, but thankfully, we really haven't had to deal with many um, sicknesses or deaths or anything like that. Um, so I can't really speak to those moments that people have. But um, I have spoke to people who have had those moments, who are living through those right now, and um, I know that there are days they just want to go run into the woods and just you know scream and yeah. Um, uh, or do other things to, to relieve their stress and everything. But um, I know, like I said, it's it, it could be worse. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, it is important to remind ourselves of that. That's for sure. And bad times are only going to keep coming. It's not, it's not like you don't want to look down all the time. It's, that's just more important to make the best of the times that are good to help balance things out when they do get hard. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's survival in the end. Yeah. And you got to remember, too, you have people watching you. Like mm -hmm. children, yep. and so you got to be the example to them and help them to see how to get through those moments in life. Very good point on that. And that's that's yeah. exactly that. Because they are watching everything, like we were saying a while ago. You know, it's got to start at home, and that's another part of it as well. How they handle a situation. Yeah, that's yeah. really. It's amazing. These things sound so basic when we say them. I know they're so I easy know. to say. Not always yeah. easy. To yes, play yes, it's true. And it's hard to practice, and it's also amazing sometimes how people don't get some of these things. That's what's also surprising. Like, yes, you know sure what we think is just a given for some people is, hasn't even been questioned to them yet. Yeah, yeah, and everybody's on a different journey, and you can't, you know, get down on them for not behaving the way that you think they should or the way that you do, because not everybody has arrived there yet. Not everybody has learned yeah. that yet, and. It sometimes frustrates you, but at the same time, you frustrated somebody at one point in your life. I know. So, or, you be, or we may be frustrating them right now. Yeah. Mm. So you just kind of have to show some grace uh, to them and, and help them walk through that season in their life also. Really well put. But once again, it sounds like something we should all know, but I mean, everybody needs that reminder now and then. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh, because life is hard, and it's hard to always, as much as we want to think we're always doing the right thing, nobody always does the right thing. Everybody slips, everybody falls. Some stay down yeah. longer than others. Yeah. Because life is rough. It's not to scare anybody or to depress anybody, but it can't. you can't take it for granted that some pitfalls can be pretty big, and it's sometimes harder to call out. And it depends how that person feels at that moment. Mm -hmm. That's why it's always good to have people around you, too, that, that love you and that when you're going through those times that they can, uh, can help pull you out or just, you know, be there with you during those times. Yep. And we've all needed it. There's no shame in helping somebody. There's, there's no shame in getting help. As a youth pastor, what do you suggest to somebody who says that they yeah. are uh, deep down in a hole, so to say, what is the first thing to do to, to try to get out? Um, yeah. It, it, again, it, it really depends on the situation. Um, you know, we, uh, we work with a variety of kids and, and some of them are some pretty, uh, rough backgrounds. Um, you know, and like, uh, Kelly was saying is that, 
uh, that's the first thing to, to realize is that if they're not acting the way you expect them to, um, you really don't know what's going on um, in their lives. Uh, you know, and so for everybody, it's different. Um, but it's, it's for us, I mean, we just try and uh, we try and love on them, um, show them that, that, you know, they may think that nobody cares about them, that, but to show them that people do care and that people do love them, um, you know, no matter what, no matter um, what they're going through or, or you know, the bad, they've made. bad decisions they've made um, or, or whatever is that, uh, you know, uh, we love them. Um, you know, they will be completely honest. They irritate us sometimes, but, mm-hmm. but we still continue to love them. Um, you know, and we believe that our, our faith is that uh, uh, no matter what you've done, we, we serve a God who, who is forgiving uh, of those things, um, you know, and so uh, just to try and help them realize that, uh, that, that God still loves them and God still has a, a plan for their lives, mm-hmm. um, you know, and that, that he is, he, he's willing to forgive you for whatever you've done or whatever you're going through, that, that he's there with you, so. And one of the things that, you know, that we do like to do, you know, is just sit and listen. Just let them talk. Even if you, yep. th- th- even if what they're saying, just you're like, well, duh, I, you know, of course that's going to need it, but just don't, don't say anything. Just let them, let them talk to you. You listen. That's all. And uh, if the moment arises where you're able to uh, walk with them through prayer, um, it's amazing the peace that that might give them and to help them walk through that day with them. And, um, maybe the rest of their week um, till we see them again. So just listening is huge. That's a big thing because people instinctively want to A, help, and B, by doing that, usually then start listening to their own experiences. They're not competing with the other person most times. And there is something to be said for instead of trying to fix it or adding a bunch of cliches, sometimes it's just listening. And hearing. Yeah. Hearing, yeah, exactly. Like not offering a quick fix or another story to kind of counteract it, just right. to listen. Yeah. yeah, well, and as adults, we often have a tendency to, to look down on kids' problems is that those their problems aren't that big because, you know, yes. we've already been through them. Right. And we're going through something that seems a lot bigger. But to them, that it's it's the biggest thing they're going through. And so we, we try and be careful to say, oh, that's, that's nothing. You'll get through this. Look, you know, I've been through it. And, you know, it's we, we try to never minimize their problem. That's a really good point right there as well. Because you're right, that happens. And sometimes we even do it with the good intentions of yeah. thinking, well, there, you know. Right, I'm right. Not sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to get better. You you know, you'll, you'll make it through this. But, yeah. I mean, when you're, you know, it's kind of like being in a tunnel and you see that, you know, you may not see that light at the other end. Yep. You, know, you may not think you're going to get through it. You don't know which way, you know. You may be about ready to run into a wall instead of going towards the exit, and so mm-hmm. you know it's just you've got to you've got to meet them where they're at and and walk with them. Yep, I think the teenage years would be comparable a lot of times to what women say about birth. You know, they forget over time, it's kind of the pain, or they would never have other children. I think teenage yeah. years are the same with that with all of us. We kind of forget just how traumatic you can feel in those times, right. and how yeah. they seem little problems to us. But to them, it was their world either coming apart or, um, you know, I don't know if I explained that properly, but I feel no, that. I, I think you did a good job. Yeah. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, we also it's forget some of the stupid way. things we did as teenagers. And Definitely. Some of those stupid things. We... Of course. Because your brain is not ready to function. It's so caught in like a purgatory. You're not a kid anymore. You're not an adult. You're put in adult situations, but you're still thinking, or you do thinking you're an adult, but then when you get in trouble, then you run to the kid excuse. Oh, I'm too young and I didn't know. So, yeah, <laughs> it's hard when you don't know where you fit in. And that's what teenage years really are all about is not fitting in. Even the most popular person doesn't never feel like they fully fit in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're always striving to, to fit in. And, yep. Uh, you know, that's where a lot of their bad choices come from is I was trying to fit in. Yeah, and it's not the goth kid hiding by himself. Sometimes that goth kid in the corner is more adjusted than the cheerleader of the football. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's, it's all superficial uh, appearances. It's what's going on underneath. Lots of insecurity, lots of uh, questions. So I really like what you said about listing like that. That's uh, 
Also, that's how Raul was suggesting. They work with veterans uh, and PTSD that suffer from PTSD. Uh, so one of the best things that they suggest for uh, the people that they work with is to get them to do something to help others. Yeah. And uh, I agree. They look that outside themselves. Yeah. Yeah. It fulfills yourself uh, by helping others. It fulfills you more than sometimes doing things for yourself. Of course. It shows you that the world is bigger than just you. And like you were saying, well, your problems a while ago, that ties right into that of showing that other people can have problems too. And it makes yours not feel so uh, bounding. Yeah. 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 That's true. Very true. I always like to try to figure out how to get the kids to look outside themselves, <coughs> even in preschool, you know, I'm always mm -hmm. like, okay, look at this person. How do you think they're feeling right now? And they didn't do anything to them. It's just that this child is sad because, you know, mom just dropped them off or something like that. And just trying to get them to, cause they're so self-centered at that age that just them look outside of themselves to, to try to uh, help them, you know, and to help each other. But in the, in the end, it really does help them not be so self-centered. And that is an important gift because we all got to coexist in this world. And that's what got lost a lot with telling every child that they're perfect. Right. Yeah. And you've cut everybody else out of the world. You're number one. So don't worry about the other people because you're perfect. And that's yeah. a horrible message to pass down. Yeah. Even yeah. when they don't realize they're doing it. Like you say, they think they're just making, you know, giving their kids the best. Yeah. yeah. Many of, well, I didn't have this when I'm growing up. So I'm going to make sure my kid has everything, you know, and that's, that's not life. They don't need everything. They don't appreciate no. everything. You can only have so much of something before it's meaningless, and that's money and material. I'm not saying to live like – I'm not picking on Amish. I'm just taking that word for an example. Right, right. I'm not yeah. saying that, but I'm also not saying that to live like some spoiled brat in Manhattan either. There is a happy medium balance. to everything in life, balance. Yeah. Balance is key to our kids. That's my number one goal is for them to grow up and possibly as balanced as I can get them or we can get them. That they don't take things for granted, but they also don't take themselves for granted. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. For sure. Because balance is sorely lacking. That's the word that sums up everything we've been talking about tonight. I think they so, lack. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is important to have that to to uh, make sure that we're not, it's not all about us. Yeah. You know, and we talk about that. Like I said, we're we're not perfect either. No, uh, there are times dealing with kids that I want to tell them just to suck it up and shut up. But yep, I have to to refrain from doing that. And even if you we do once in a while. Nobody's perfect. We always think we have to live like this. Once again, those '80s sitcoms. Nobody's perfect. There's days you're going to say something to your kid, and you'll say like, "After why did I say that?" Yeah, they right. will. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They need to see even that we're not perfect. Yeah. Well, and into when you do mess up. To go to them, yep. And sorry, I messed up. That yep. was wrong with me. Yep. I am. I apologize. I'm. You know, whatever you got to do to yep. so that they also see that this is what happens when you mess up, and this is what you do. That's right. There's no shame to. I've done that with my son. I remember that the other week with everything going on, you know, and it's like, will you stop? You know, it just comes out a bit, and then I'm yeah. after like, you know, son, I'm having a bad day. Or like everybody else, I got a lot of things going on, and I just reacted with everything going. You know, it wasn't like screaming at them, but it's you're right. It's just showing them, hey, I made a mistake. I can say I'm sorry, the same as you got to say you're sorry when you make a mistake. Yeah, and that doesn't just because you said sorry doesn't mean you get out of the consequences. Right. Because you know, sometimes you still have to live with those consequences. So. Yep. And consequences is part of it because there is consequences in life. We live in a world full of consequences. Yep. And that's yeah. an important thing to know. A lot of them get into trouble when they're 17 because they've never faced a consequence a day in their life. Right. Yeah. Until they're sitting in the back of a cop car and they're terrified and they don't know what to do. And, okay, you're a minor and we get expunged, but you're still going to have a rough road for a little bit, you know? Yeah, there's some. There's definitely some consequences to follow after that. that and uh, let your kids go through that. Don't yep. try to fix it. Nope. they got to learn. Be the best gift you can ever get them is for them to learn from it and move on and make something better of it, not pretend it never happened. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For mm -hmm. sure. As much as a parent as you might be embarrassed by it, it's, uh, you know, I feel like as I'm saying this, you know, years down the road, I'm going to have to be living it. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. You're the same as me right now. You're the same. In the end, I know, again, who who is in control of everything, and it works out for, for the good, so. 
Right. Uh, and, and it doesn't project, discriminate. But... It could be somebody with no money, and it could be somebody who is wealthy. It could be yeah. somebody of any color. It could be somebody of any age. It's a human thing. Yep. Yeah. For sure. Guys, you guys are so amazing. Like, it's been such a nice talk with you guys. I appreciate that because after the last couple of days not being on as much, I couldn't ask for any better guests tonight to yeah. feel to work <laughs> back in. So I really want to thank you guys for your patience and that. Well, thank you guys for having us. It has been a blessing. Like I said, I absolutely love uh, watching your guys' live stream. So um, thank you for having us on. Yeah, this has been great. I, I didn't know what to expect, but it's all been wonderful. So thank all you guys right. so much. Thank you to everybody in the chat. I don't know who won the bets. And <laughs> like, like I said, I wasn't. I can't pay attention to both. So <laughs> you guys are one of the ones we've known since kind of the beginning, you know, and that's why it's nice to have you guys on. Um, there's a connection there, and I like I always said, after talking, we'll never look at each other's videos the same again because we'll always have this next layer. And the right. same exactly. people in the chat watching you guys, you know, and. Yeah. If we can bring anything to YouTube, that's what we've tried to do. And you guys are a great example of that again tonight. So, yeah, that is always exciting when you are. It's like, it's just like reconnecting with old friends and, and yeah. knowing that you have friends in all these places all over. And I always wonder, I'm like, what if I was able to go? What if for some reason I got stranded somewhere? I could maybe even look up and, you know, my YouTube and be like, oh, well, they live here. They, I could go visit them, you know, and, and it'd, it'd just be like, just you will never be, again, you, you know? have my guarantee you will never be stranded in Montreal if you find your way <laughs> oh, here. Wonderful. You guys have <laughs> a place to come. To Montana so. uh, is one of my lists because I passed through by truck, but we're going back someday. I wanted to go. We lived in Saskatchewan. That's where our daughter was born. Oh. So we were in uh, North Dakota. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it wasn't it wasn't good for us because we were still going through for Xenia to be a permanent resident, and she was five months pregnant. And uh, we got to the border on the way back, and they almost never let her back into Canada. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. They, nobody wants to be stuck in North Dakota. No, they almost sent her back to Latvia. Oh. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Yeah, wow, they deported me like, almost like because they. Pregnant. Yeah. See, when you become a permanent, when you apply to be a permanent resident, by law, you're not supposed to be building a life if you're here under a visitor visa. Oh. But we were kind of in a gray zone because we applied, but she was here under that. And our son, Chris, because he was born in Latvia. And uh, when we got back in, they looked at the paperwork and then they searched my truck. They separated us. They questioned her for what, two, three hours. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. And then brought us in. And we were one question away from her being sent away to, like through my knot they were going to fly her back to latvia her and chris five months pregnant with audrey and uh by the grace of god what saved us was we told the truth and that's exactly what it was we told the truth we because then they questioned me our stories lined up and when we were done she said you're in and don't ever come back to a border until your paperwork is completely settled don't anywhere go near one so we were so terrified we never even touched the states for what another three years oh four yeah, years five, four, five, five years five years i think that wow. was too hairy to even play with that time well like she would have been deported and then i think it was five years before she could apply to come back to canada again wow that is so, kind of a scary time wow yeah, no, so, so North Dakota is not a bad place, but it was not a good time for us there. So No, uh-uh. We just, we make a lot of jokes about North Dakota, and they make jokes, and so, yeah. It's our, it's our, I understand that one, believe me. I get that a little bit of neighboring rebellion is so. <laughs> but Montana's if, beautiful. If you do come to Montana, you got to make sure to come to the western part of the state. The eastern yes. part of the state's ugly. The western part of the state is beautiful. <laughs> you guys get the mountainside. Yeah, that's right. Beautiful. We lived in eastern Montana for a while in Billings, and that's where you know we yeah. went to school. And man, I Billings was fun, but I miss my mountains so bad. I, I, it's just we're surrounded by mountains, and Billings yeah. is flat, lots of plateaus. <laughs> oh. So. Well, that's like uh, like Saskatchewan. I never lived in such a flat place in my entire existence. It was like, Xenia put it best. It was like, she told her mother that was in Latvia, she said, what is it like? And she said, if you've ever wondered what it was like to stand in the middle of the ocean, 
That's what that's what Saskatchewan is. Like really, wow. And we were like 75 kilometers north of North Dakota, so we were in the same flatlands right up. And so I was working in the Balkan oil fields. So oh yeah, okay, sure. Same sure. thing, just different countries, same same fields. So right, exactly. Yep. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty flat there, and I'm oh. sure it, it that can have its its beauty also. Yeah. Uh, but it, if you didn't grow up with it, it, you don't see beauty in it sometimes. <laughs> oh, no. Same as me. Like, even me. Like, I didn't grow up in the Rockies, but I missed the Appalachians. I missed the rivers. I missed all these things. But then the guys from Saskatchewan that worked in the West, like in the Rockies, they used to tell me that it drove them crazy to be in the mountains all the time. They always felt so closed in. Sure. And that's the same as people who live by the coastline, you know, or used to water and then go live in further in the interior. It's whatever you grew up with feels like home. So, yeah, that's true. It's true. But yes, if you ever guys ever find yourself in Montana, you should look us up. <laughs> you have a word on to it. Definitely. We always got a friend. And like I say, same for you guys. You want to come up sometime? Just let us know. So, awesome. We'll have Putin together. You can try it. <laughs> yeah. I would love right. to try it. We're not, we don't have a very wide variety of, of foods that we try. So I would love to try something new. Well, <laughs> that's the adventurous one with food. I'm not. Well, Montreal and even Quebec City is probably the most Europe you can get without leaving North America. It's very, because uh, it's French influence so heavy. Uh, <laughs> Like, if you go to Quebec City, they have still have the uh, Plains of Abraham, and that's ever since the battles between the French and the uh, the British, because that wow. was the point into the St. Lawrence River where everybody was entering the interior, and it's still up. Like, they still have all the cannons, all the fortified walls are still there. And Oh, that would be awesome. I yeah. Love... Que Quebec City is really beautiful. Like, Montreal is a big city, but Quebec City is really the probably the nicest place. I find myself uh, for uh, for history and stuff like that because it is like what 450, 500 years old. Yeah, wow. that's how I roll. Was asking you if you guys know the song "Moving to Montana" uh, by Frank Zappa. Um, I've probably heard it before. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, too. I don't know it. Yeah. They. Uh, uh, I was thinking, "Meet Me in Montana" with D Dan Seals and. Uh, uh, yep. That's what's her the one name? that I'm probably familiar with. Yeah. Oh, that's my one of my favorite. Yeah, songs. that's her favorite. One of her favorite. And songs. our daughter just loves singing it. <laughs> oh, how yeah. sweet! Since she was about three, I got to sing the guy part. She sings the girl part, so she gives me the finger when it's my cue to go yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> that's really nice. Uh, how fun! Yep, she uh, she's a good. She's very bossy. She'll make a great <laughs> wife. Someday. Some guy's gonna know where he stands. <laughs> That's uh this is a picture that's Quebec City at night. I don't know if you guys can see on the screen. Uh we're a little delayed here. Hold on. Yeah, we are. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh beautiful. Oh my goodness. And what yeah. what is that uh that building there? That's the uh, the Shadow Frontenac. That's one of the big hotels. It's a big chain in Canada. These were all uh hotels built for the railroad. Oh wow. And they're like five-star hotels now. They're all across Canada. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. And it's when at the moment. We were in uh, Victoria. Um, I was just, I mean, it's not, the country is, is I think the, the way that people live is similar. Yes. Uh, but just the thought of being in a, in a, in Victoria and the history there. And, yes. Uh, it just, it, it, I wish I could have had more time there. We we went to what they called a, I don't, Craigadoc Castle. Uh, I don't know. It was it was like a big huge mansion? Yeah, it wasn't a castle. No, it wasn't a castle. Mm. But it was awesome. The history of it all, and I wish I could have just spent more time there doing that. But Victoria could... is just a short stop in on the cruise line, just so we can get back into the states. So uh, that's they don't like. Give us time do you there. guys have a follower named Jenny Hikes? Uh, this name sounds familiar. Probably. Yeah, pro she's in the run with a lot of us that she's been because she did the exact same trip as you guys, and she was also in Victoria when they did the Alaska cruise. Yeah, and uh, Victoria is very nice. Yeah, like it's a very temperate place, lots of flowers and all that. And it was really neat to be able to see. I think Washington. <laughs> that was mm. kind of cool to see Washington from Victoria. I don't know why that was so neat to me, but <laughs> it was we. Kind of cool. 
people don't realize just how close like even in montreal we're literally 45 minutes from the from the new york border really wow so, yeah it's a short drive or about an hour and a half or an hour yeah about an hour and a half to vermont so wow that's cool there's houses along the border where they have tape and half the house is in uh oh. states and half in canada wow yeah, they show them every year. Every year, for some reason, you always see the same story, and it's always this old couple. For some reason, they always do the same routine. He's like, "Hun, can you get me a cup of American coffee? And they all laugh every year. And then he goes to the American side. I don't know why. <laughs> it's, it's almost become like tradition for some reason. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. It sounds like it could be a headache, though, for... You yeah. Know? Imagine paying your taxes. The house yeah, going to provide it like 56% is in Canada, for, you know, or this and that. <laughs> I think it'd be a nightmare myself. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah, no doubt. But, <laughs> I know, it's well, so undefended for so long, the border. Like 75% of Canadians live within 100 kilometers of the U.S. border. We're such a thin belt. Wow. Yep. Huh, that's neat. And the population of Canada is the population of California. One state, and you guys got us beat. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about California the other day, weren't we? No, who was? No, I was with. No, you weren't there. Never mind. Um, but yeah, we were talking about how California is, is uh, Northern California and Southern California is such even in that one state, so oh, diverse that definitely. they were talking about splitting, splitting yeah. California into two different states because yeah. so like, there's such a different economy in that one state. It's crazy how many people are there. I, I love that northern, the northern part of California is so amazing. That drive all up to, once you leave LA, is, in my opinion, is where you really get to see the nicest part of California. Yeah, I get to fly down there in uh, June. Well, no, I'm actually going to San Francisco, so Southern California, but I hear there's a lot of history there also. So yes, I'm there is. About that. Amazing city, amazing city. We Guys, we were like a few states that the cows outnumber the people. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a that's a Midwest thing. That's normal. That's okay though. Yeah. It's called, it, it means good living. Yeah, exactly. I liked it out there. Like I grew up in a rural area and I liked it out that way as well. I liked the, the lifestyle and I I I'm glad my kids got to see both sides of it. That's part of balance, too. I don't want them being thinking that, you know, their meat is grown like, you know, like they have no understanding where, they're at, where their meat comes from. Right. I also don't want them to grow up to be Ted Nugent. You know, I'm looking for that. <laughs> yeah. You know, balance, again. balance is the word lately. Like I was a hunter, but my father was always big on like, you know, we're not going just to, to kill, you know, it's right. If you don't get anything, that's if you uh, it's no big deal and not to want to end ever, you know, yeah, not to be a wahoo, but also not to be city. Like, I'm I listen sometimes to talk radio here and it drives me crazy, even though I've oh. been so long I live. How people don't understand where their meat comes from or where their leather comes from and all these things, right? Right, such a disconnect, <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, you know, they have their, they, these animals have feelings too. And I get it. I do. But yeah, um, yeah we have to, I think, like you said, balance before is, yep. is the best way to do it. You know, it's like some people say like, oh my God, how could you do that? But at the same time, they're sitting down and eating pork chops. Well, <laughs> I'm afraid you've already crossed a line, you know? Yeah. Yep. 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 Well, like we were talking yesterday on the conversation was this natural journey about all, all this. And, uh, you know, lots of people don't know, um, lots of even the ones who are vegans or vegetarians, that uh, number one most polluting, uh, you know, industry is fashion. Mm -hmm. And the other one is agriculture in the second place. Yeah, uh, you know, so it's uh, kind of you know uh, to follow all the fashion brands and 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 uh, to to buy you know all the more expensive stuff to look uh, nice and everything, but yet at the same time, uh, being a vegan or vegetarian is kind of again counterproductive because uh, yeah. it's you know you you're gonna adapt the whole lifestyle of thinking. It can't be just one side or the other. You gotta understand what it is all about. And oftentimes lately it has become as a fashion statement more yes. than anything. That's what they were saying last night. They yeah. have to deal with a lot of that. So 
Wow. Guys, we better let you guys go. I feel bad for taking up so much of your time. The kids have been absolutely fantastic. My hat's <laughs> off to both of you. Yes. We tried them. No, I'm teasing. We didn't. They're, they're, I think it's past their bedtime, so they don't mind this. Actually. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, guys. So I'm, I'm so glad that we got to do this. And I, it, this, is, this was our evening. This is all that we had planned for our evening. So. Uh, you're not taking up our time that much. No, well, like I said, we have been excited about this all week. So, guys, you've been nothing but gracious. Even the dog has been amazing. Good job. Yeah, he's such a nice awesome. I love it. He's even in the picture. I got a little bit of a. I couldn't squeeze you all in. The picture you guys sent me, I, I didn't get time to tell you, it was too small. Oh, so, I had to go to your Facebook page. That's where I found the picture that I used tonight. I used your profile. Yeah. But the dog, I was trying to squeeze in everybody. I did my best to kind of balance it. I spent about 10 minutes trying to square it off. So You did a good job. You did a very good job. That was a selfie picture, I think, that we took. So That's a beautiful picture of you guys. I love it. I, that is one of my favorites, too. Yeah, I should probably print that one off. There you go. Yeah. See? See? There we go. So, I, Sounds good. Yeah, I think that is a keeper, so I, I think that's a great idea. Yes. And kids, once again, you guys were absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. They'll put down their phones for a second. You got to stay up, so you owe me. I'll send you my PayPal account. We've worked out already. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been nothing but phenomenal. You're an amazing family. Love your videos since we started in the beginning. Uh, I love your honesty in your videos. I love that you guys work and keep progressing with your videos. You can see it in your work. And uh, I'm lo just looking forward to more to come. And I'm definitely looking forward to the chuck wagon. Do not yeah. forget. Yes. I don't comment. You send me a message. All right. All right. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll do our best. And thank, thank you guys for doing what you do for promoting everybody and, and trying to help everybody to get to where they want to be. Appreciate it. Yeah. And thank you to everybody in the chat. Um, I wasn't commenting on a lot. And so I apologize for that. But uh, thank you guys. And uh, whoever won the bets, I expect a cut. So <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, guys. <laughs> Have a great night, guys. Take thank care. You. Thank Bye. you for being and keep, thank you for keep coming to the the streams and stuff like that. We really do appreciate it. Oh uh, yeah, I like I love them. So you guys keep them up. And we'll be talking soon then. All right. All right. Thank you, Thanks, guys. Bye, Bye guys. Have a great Bye. night. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye now. Oh, that was so much fun. My God almighty. Oh, yes. My God. That was amazing. And yes. I like that because we've had them since the beginning. Another one of them. And it felt so good to finally get to talk without typing and that, you know, and just get to have a conversation. And like I said, I still feel like off my game some. So I really appreciate them tonight. They were so gracious. All you guys are great. And such an amazing array of subjects that we talked about today, you know, from fun to serious. And uh, once again, I, I, I love it so much. We balance. Yes, rounded and balanced. Balance yeah. is the key. Ever, That's right. Ever since I watched that uh, Joey's video about balance, yeah. that word comes like almost every day in, in our conversation now. It's like, it's, it's the word. <laughs> well, it is key to having a decent life. I mean, nothing's perfect, but uh, decent is not much to strive for. And I believe balance gives that. Yeah. You know, as mine, you saw them. There's still food on the place. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Bottle Caps is worried about the kids. <laughs> Well, bottle caps. We were having discussion about how kids have to be let uh, be kids, and um, uh, they, uh, you know, enough with all the uh, teaching life stuff. But then I said uh, uh, the grandkids are the ones that you spoil, and you let them do what they That's want. Right. Mm -hmm. The kids are there. Uh, you want to do your best to try and raise them to be decent humans with the best adapt skills for life. The time does pass fast. And you think when they're first born, you got the whole world with them forever to get what they need to know. And you'll take it easy for a bit and just more, but it passes in the blink of an eye. It's such a short amount of time when you look at how much you got to get them ready for, for when they leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and you can still, in the meantime, enjoy them and yes, play with definitely. them and let them play and not have a, everything regimented. It's not about that. It's balance even on that. It's, it's balance even on it's, that. It's enjoying them and, and and also setting them up. So yeah, I um, 
it's yeah. Mm. Um, but again, everybody has their own thing ways yeah. of doing it too. So, by the way, so. Bible Caps is coming up. Uh, surprise! It's coming up <laughs> uh, during the Formula One time and is willing to crash on our couch. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I said that I would expect uh, nothing less than a three course meal <laughs> consisting of a soup, pork chops, and a cake. He's so, really coming? Well, that's what he's saying. So, wow. I, I hope so. Now we're going to be expecting you. <clears throat> So I I I hope I that really it wasn't a lot, just a joke. Jo yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my so, god. Uh, so please let us know when our, when exactly <laughs> this woman is on. a dreamer. <laughs> yes, I am a dreamer. Well, at least the cake. At least the cake <laughs> should be there. I like that balance is a phenomenon. I like that. Yeah, so everybody's striving for it, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's, uh, just because it's a great thing, it doesn't mean it will be attainable at the end of the day. It's, it's something to strive for. And I think it's never really there. It is like a seesaw, you know. Mm -hmm. It's such a tiny moment when it actually is leveled and then it goes, you know, back and forth again. But yeah. you can always strive to get there. Just, just reminding yourself about it, I think, is a lot, you know. There's too many things to happen in life to have it. perfect balance. No, it's, it's impossible. It's relative. You look for relative balance. Yeah. Yeah, you know, sure. let them be little. Yeah. Sometimes when people say they're balancing time with their kids, quantity is actually an issue, not just quality. Quantity. Uh, well, I really think mm. it's it's important. The quality is. I don't know exactly if you meant. That. I, he means that to making sure that you're around more. You know that you're not like. Uh, Spending like a half hour a week, that's really good quality, but the quantity isn't there. He's, he's telling the balance. Yeah, for sure. Saying. But I mean, you know, I really think that quality is over the quantity because uh, sometimes 15 minutes of one to one, face to face, un undistracted attention to your child is worth more than the whole day. Um, just being there. No, but I think he means more like, you know, one that would do it like 15 minutes a week of pure quality, but not enough quantity. Oh, I think okay, that's okay. Like, just being more involved with your kids and stuff. No, for sure, for sure, for sure. But yes, the quality does trump for the the time. The time that you should spend with them should make a quality time. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not preaching. Believe me, there's times I've spent time with my kids or not spent time with my kids, and I look back, I'm like, oh, my God, I really wasted that moment. Like, I, I'm amazed sometimes by on, on the playground, uh, some people uh, are, for example, in their phones while the kids are playing. Yeah. And I, I sometimes think, well, that's your time being there. I mean, one thing, if the child's playing with other kids, yeah. if their child's playing on their own, and in the meantime, you're sitting right beside the child um, with your nose in the phone, well, might as well just not go to the playground. <laughs> and that's not a quality time. And not even a quantity time either. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. You're just kind yeah. of there in case of an accident. Yeah. So, um, hmm. yes, trying to help your seven year old back to her less wise youth. <laughs> hmm. Enjoy your time, by the yeah. way. It's an early morning, you said. Uh, I hope you have a good uh, the rest of the weekend. Um. Well, guys, I think uh, you, uh, usually we stay on later on Saturdays, but I honestly, and it's, I love each and every one here. <laughs> we both do. I think we're just, yeah, so beat. <laughs> we're trying, and I appreciate your patience with us and that. Uh, I really missed you guys. It feels so good to sit with you guys tonight. You have no idea. Because this is the time usually where I can decompress. Uh, it is being with you guys. So I really did miss it the last couple of days. Because last week I was gone, then back for a couple of days, and then doing all this stuff again and that. So. Yeah, it, it has been kind of quite hectic. Uh, yeah. Hopefully uh, after the long weekend, uh, it's going to be a little bit back to normal hmm. and uh i think our lives have been most of the time so unroutined that yeah we, with that we miss routine and i know most of the people usually say oh their life is too routine and i think we have said numerous times during the time that we have been together 
that we actually would love to have routine. Yes. <laughs> so um, yes. Hopefully back to uh, working on that <laughs> yep. next week. And uh, Monday we are gonna have uh, Millie and Sh Ashley Shelley <laughs> mm. <laughs> on uh, a couple who has a long distance relationship, and they uh, are actually getting together. Uh, and uh, are going on our uh, live stream on Monday. That's Millie and Ashley on Monday. Yeah. And uh, Tuesday, our regular Tuesday Tech Talk. If you have any questions, social media, photography, videography, any suggestions uh, for people, any questions for people, uh, please come over and let's chat about it. And then the rest of the week is full with amazing guests. So stick around every night from Monday to Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern. We love having you guys all enjoy all the conversations and getting to know you through these live chats and live streams with our guests. How come you painted your walls in St. Asylum white? They're it's not, not white. white. It's the color of my skin, by the way. As you can see, it blends. It's not white. It's um, it's cream. Yeah. It's cream white. Kind of like sand. Yeah. But you know what? We have brown. We have brown. You don't, can't see it. That's why. You can, uh, we have brown. Uh, see. The baseboards and the crown. The moldings baseboards are. and the crown moldings are dark brown, like chocolate brown. So it looks more like an Oreo cookie. We're in mm -hmm. Susie. <laughs> we are inside the uh, Oreo cookie right now. That's mm -hmm. how it feels like. So. Susie asked if you. I asked you if she got her Twitter message. I probably did. I haven't uh, checked uh, my messages uh, for a couple of days now, and I do apologize for those that I haven't. I promise I will get back to uh, Twitter messages tomorrow. Unless it's emergency, but I, I will get back tomorrow. I haven't. I know they're there. I I have seen them there. Yeah. I will get back to them tomorrow. I've been only tweeting stuff out. I haven't been checking on messages. I do deeply apologize. So back to routine. Sorry, tomorrow. Hopefully. Believe me, nobody's waiting for routine more more than us. Yeah, I do apologize, and I do feel bad because I see them all on red there. But I I I am. I promise I will get back to them. Uh, so so sorry about that. And yeah, uh, oh, and by the way, the color, we are getting back from the bold and beautiful, as I say, uh, from bold and, uh, um, uh, you know, more contemporary colors uh, of orange, as you see, uh, to a little bit more classical uh, values. So just a little change. So, uh, Susie? I read your message, uh, and we'll we'll send you back an answer very soon. Well, there I, you go. Um, Andrew inspired me to make a slideshow video. Excellent, Bob. All living photo series. Perfect. Are you when when are you putting it out? Oh my God! Look at Stephanie's the sweetest. Oh, and Stephanie, you you're too. so sweet. You're so kind. I uh, have mm. a good weekend. Cream was a good band. Yes, I agree. <laughs> um, no, that was a good message, so, Susie. And bottle caps. Oh yes, I would love to go to your side someday. Uh, we went as far as Golden, as I was saying, but we were much closer and we're living in Weyburn, so it was a little just two days drive. Now it's going to be a little bit more, but <laughs> someday. Uh, but if you come for Formula One, you can definitely crash here. Well, Kat says I got a couple of hundred photos to filter through. <laughs> oh, we know about that. <laughs> we know all about Golden is in Eastern Canada. No, in BC, uh, we went to the Rockies, and there is Golden, where the uh, bear sanctuary is. That's right. You can uh, see grizzly bear up close. I've been through Vancouver and Vancouver <laughs> Island, and I wanted to take Xenia, but we uh, had the kids. Xenia was pregnant, so we left Saskatchewan, and we drove as far. Golden was our turnaround point. Yeah. We wanted to make it right through. 
that's how I roll. You have an excellent night. Thank you so much for coming. Always a huge pleasure. Yeah, I, I, that's why you say that because West Coasters consider Golden to be like Eastern Canada. That's that's for them. They call it the East Side. That's why. Well, it's so it's closer to them than it is to this side. No, 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 no. You're missing the it's the joke into it. That's the point. They call it Eastern Canada because they're saying it's not connected with their Western oh, coast. Oh, okay, my goodness. Duh. <laughs> well, I'm not really Canadian, so I guess I didn't get that one. We all look beautiful today. Oh my God, Stephanie! You're Stephanie, so... you are just outpouring love every time you come. You yeah, are. This is amazing. But now you're starting to scare me. If we look good tonight, my Xenia always looks good, but I look like death warmed over. So no, I don't know if I look good tonight. I, I'm blending in with the wall, so <laughs> I will have to find my red lipstick for Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, if I wear something like this, like white, I I'm, I might as well be invisible. You're a geisha girl. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, then bottle caps is gonna ask me again why I'm so candied up as he did when I was <laughs> candied up. <laughs> yeah, because uh, the first time I put the red lipstick on the live stream, he asked why I'm so candied up, <laughs> and then somebody else asked about why I'm dolled up, and, and then I stopped putting it on. <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh my God! Oh my. Well, good night, you all. Yeah. Keep creating. Uh, spend your time with your loved ones tomorrow, and uh, come back on Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern, with our amazing guests and you in a chat. Bye you guys you. have a great weekend. Cheers and keep creating. Night, guys. Take care. Thank you for coming. Love you all. Mm -hmm.